and tighter on the circulation. We have swarmed this thing like bees on honey. And here's the deal. It's moving south, southeast. It's actually headed down towards parts of the metro. That's going to come in from the north at the same time. We've got other severe storms now coming into the west metro, coming in from the south. So it's a one-two punch, one from the north, one from the west, and it's all going to merge right on top of Oklahoma City with damaging wind, large hail, all right, at least the potential to get quarter to golf ball size hail, winds 60 to 70 miles per hour. And that tornado threat, it will be there, but it's not going to be in every storm. And right now, it's only in the storm up north, but also rotation developing to the west of Oklahoma City. We've got to watch these storms carefully. Okay, before we get going here, let's go to Jim Gardner. He's up top. And uh, Jim, tornado warning now for your storm. Uh, the circulation, you're looking right at it. As I don't see anything on the ground, but give me an update on what you're looking at right there. Go ahead. David, as you can tell, this has really, really ramped up in the past 30 minutes. Right now, we're over the Cimarron River, just north of Guthrie here, shooting back to the north as this drops to the south, David. There's a tremendous amount of cloud to ground lightning, as you can see from these shots from Bob Mills, Sky News 9. You can see the wall cloud right there. We also, as we pan back to the left, David, here, come back to the left, we've got another lowering here trying to form right here. And this is all kind of dropping to the south, David, but here's another pretty good wall cloud trying to form up but just a tremendous amount of cloud to ground lightning, a lot of rain, a lot of hail. This is a wicked storm, David. We'll keep tracking it, keep you updated. Jim Garpoin Live from Bob Mills, Scott News 9, back to you. Okay, all right, great job there, Jim. Stay with it here as it moves off to the south. I'll show you exactly where it is coming up. Uh, before we go to our next tracker, I'll tell you what, let's go to Lynx 1. Let's get into this now. You wanna go to Lynx 3? Uh, Lynx 3 control room. Let's go to Lynx 3, my bad. Let's go to Lynx 3, and this is this big cell up here. It was several cells, they've now become one. And uh, Cassie, go ahead and let's turn off the lightning here. We know we've got tons of lightning, right? This is a lightning storm as well. But the hook is right back in here, right? You can see kind of a spin even with the reflectivity here. This is our next-gen live. This is our million-watt radar. You can see the spin back in here. Jim's right here. Tom and Rob are looking right back at the updraft and the wall cloud. And uh, Val's right here. They're going to have golf ball-size hail running from north of Guthrie. It's going to pound you folks in Guthrie down to Meridian, to Coyle, to Perkins. It's moving still south-southeast. It's not moving quite straight south, but south-southeast now, uh, roughly at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. So the tornado warning is going to be for the areas, and again, just southwest of Orlando. I'll show you exactly where uh, coming up. Let's go to shear rate on this, Cassie. Take a closer look at that, and it's right here. Area of circulation is right here. It's southwest of Mole Hall, just north of Jim. And that's that shot right there. Okay, that's that shot from Tom and Rob. That picture in the lower left is right here. That's the area of spin. Let's go to Max Rot. Let's see what Max Rot looks like. And uh, there it is. It's right here. There's Tom and Rob. Circulation is dropping south, southeast. Jim's right here looking off to the north. Okay, let's go back out in the field. Let's go to Tom here real quick. We'll get an update from Tom. And uh, there's that supercell. Tom, tornado warning now for your storm. There's the wall cloud. Do you see anything on the ground? Go ahead. That's right, David. Right now, I don't see anything on the ground. Um, it's actually been trying to do something for the last 15 to 20 minutes. Um, earlier, we had a really well-defined wall cloud, and it really, really tightened up, and it, we thought it was going to do something there for a moment, but it didn't. Um, right now, as you can see in our shot, the rain is really wrapping into that wall cloud that we had visible here about Two minutes ago so we're going to go south and try to get a better vantage point back to you david okay all right great job there tom and rob stay with this it's dropping south southeast now let's go back to links three and uh, this is the hook right here this is where jim is tom's right here val's right here looking right at it we'll go to val here coming up and the hook is right here you can see the reflectivity wrapping around jim is right there okay this is where the tornado is going to be let's put max rot back on we'll do max rot Okay, and then we'll do a storm track. Cassie, get a storm track ready on this, and we're going to drop it almost straight south, but we'll go south, southeast, and include Guthrie. You folks in Guthrie, this is to your north, okay? This is now passing Mulhall. Circulation is, it's passing Mulhall. Mulhall's in the wind and hail and rain. The area of circulation where the tornado is going to be is going to be just north of the river, north of Guthrie here, up near the flats, okay? That's where the area of circulation is. It's dropping south, southeast. Let's go to Valcaster. Val is right there where Tom is, looking at it. Let's go to Val and get an update. And uh, Val, I know you see the circulation there. We're going to take your stream live and get an update from Val. What do you think, Val? doesn't look like it's on the ground, but circulation now pretty strong just to your south-southwest, about two miles. 
Okay, David, I, I'm just going to tell you this, that right now it's, it's uh, wrapped in rain from our vantage point. Uh, about eight minutes ago, seven or eight minutes ago, we saw a funnel uh, that was partially wrapped in rain, a brief funnel uh, right where that happened at. But uh, right. Yeah, 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 go ahead, David. No, you go ahead, up. go ahead. Go ahead. What, what do you see when you look down to your south? Yeah, that's, we're going south. We stopped to do the report here. Uh, we saw a funnel wrapped in rain about 10 minutes ago, uh, and that was just a little west-southwest of Orlando. Now that area has kind of moved over us, and uh, and it continues to, uh, to to rotate. So it's still rotating, but uh, we're going to stay with it. Back to you. Yeah, incredible there. Yeah, go ahead and get south. Boy, the lightning in this thing is just really uh, crazy. Lots of lightning, lots of lightning. Okay, let's go back uh, to the ground here. Let's go to, there we go, Lynx 3. There's Jim. The pod mic is on, guys. There's Jim's shot. And uh, let's get the audio figured out back there. Again, this is where the hook is right here. This is where the inflow is, okay? This is going to be just north of Guthrie. It's dropping straight, almost due south. It's more south-southeast. Okay, we're going to leave this storm for just a second. Okay, hang with me here. We've got another severe storm with a wall cloud out in Canadian County. And look at these storms here, folks. These are the storms that are going to sweep across the metro from the west. These will sweep across the northern and eastern sides of Oklahoma City, at least the north metro, Edmond to Luther. You're going to try to get in on these storms. If these don't clip you, uh, these certainly will from the west. Bobby Payne's right there uh, with Alan Brosey. These storms are all severe, once again, moving east-southeast now at about 20 miles per hour. Let's go on the ground. Let's go to Bobby Payne and get an update from Bobby. And uh, Bobby, your storm has circulation in it. Uh, it does have a wall cloud. You've been talking about it here for the last 10 minutes or so. Give me an, I know you're in the trees. Give me an update on that updraft and what you're looking at right now with that storm now coming into uh, Canadian County, just north of Calumet. It's headed to El Reno. Go ahead, Bobby. Okay, David, it did have a well-defined wall cloud about five to seven minutes ago and strong outflow winds undercut it. Uh, right now, the wall cloud is still disorganized, but it's just now just getting ready to come out over the top of us. We're about, we are about uh, three to four miles north of Calumet. Uh, the wall cloud does or did have a little bit of rotation, slow rotation, uh, but we're continuing to track it to the south. Back to you, David. Okay. All right. Great job there, Bobby. Great job. Stay with this. It'll sweep across the metro. Uh, let's go to Lynx 4 control room. And we'll do a storm track, and this is going to be on the western storm here, and then we'll do a storm track on the uh, tornado warning to our north. The, that is the tornado warning, what you're seeing right okay. now. Okay, yes, it yes. is. Okay, there we go. So tornado warning again. Once again, this is for, for northern Logan County. If you live north of Guthrie, if you live south of Mulhall, okay, it's kind of in a rural area right now. You need to go to your safe spot, lowest level, center part of the house. If you live in a mobile home, you've got to get out of there, right? I'll show you where, exactly where the tornado is coming up. But uh, once again, we're looking at Cedar Valley, 838 Meridian, 845 Guthrie, 846. Okay, Guthrie, you are just about dead center line of fire with this thing uh, right now. Arcadia, Arcadia, 921. That's over here and Luther at about 923. I think it's going to keep moving more like this. So I think Edmund, Guthrie, Luther, you're in the line of fire with this storm and with that potential, again, possible tornado right now that's just, just pretty much right on I-35. Okay, now let's do a storm track on the other severe storms uh, back to the west here. And again, this next line is going to move east-southeast across the metro. We're looking at Calumet at 825, Cherokee Trading Post 829, El Reno at about 855, Piedmont 901, Yukon 923, Edmond 932. Okay, that's going to be this line out here to the west. Uh, Edmond 932, The Village 938. Uh, outlet Shops, 944, Arcadia at about 950. So the bottom line is we're looking at El Reno at 9 o'clock. That's the West Metro, all right? And then the eastern sides of Oklahoma City, uh, Midwest City, Tinker Air Force Base at about 1020. So it'll take about an hour and a half, maybe a little longer, to run from El Reno all the way across the city. And this will produce, unless it weakens, it will produce damaging winds, 60 to 70 miles per hour, quarter, and possibly golf ball size hail. The hail sizes in this are not quite as big as what they have been up to the north, okay? They have been larger up here, at least looking at radar. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 3. We'll go back and do the radar thing again. And uh, there it is right there. 
And see, see that right there? Look how tight that was right there, folks. Circulation really ramped up. Cassie, go ahead and zoom on in on link three here. And look at that, folks. Yeah, that was really, really tight. Okay, so that area has weakened. It's gone away, okay? That area has gone away. It's still right here, but we might be developing a new area uh, just south of Val or near Val. But that main area that came out of Orlando right there, you can see that couplet showing up very clearly. That was, again, what could have been tornado genesis. It doesn't look like, it does not look like it touched down, but I tell you what, uh, it was close. Our trackers were jumping up and down. I just think it only took about 10 minutes to go from it's serious to wow. With the wall cloud spinning, we had winds blowing in in all the right directions into the center part of this thing, and it was spinning like a top there really, really hard. Now, we have, like I said, we have a new area of spin beginning to develop now. Um, it's going to be north of Guthrie. Guthrie's right here. Uh, this is Crescent. Okay, Cedar Valley Golf Course is right here. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven miles. Uh, basically, due north of Guthrie, this is going to go right into Guthrie, uh, from the north. Let's go back to Val Castor. Let's take his shot control room. And uh, Val, the original area uh, of circulation that you were jumping up and down about uh, near Orlando, that's now gone. But now the new area is trying to develop. It looks like nearly on top of you. Go ahead, give me an update as you continue to push to the south. 100% agree, David. It has. It's developing right on top of us. And actually, I'm going to say this is just maybe a half a mile to our northeast. And we're right here next to the river over here, north of Guthrie a little ways. But you see it right there. That's it. I mean, it's to me, it's it's increasing fast. Uh, this pretty much came out of nowhere. And we got so many trees here. But you can see our shot. There's a big pronounced lowering right there, David. Yeah, no doubt about it. And you can see the right side of that bow in your shot. Night shot there looks great. And then you can see the other side of this thing. So it is still spinning. Okay, Val and Amy are there. Tom's there. Jeff Gardner's still there. Let's go back to reflectivity here. Let's go back to link three. <clears throat> and uh, again, this is where the hook is. It's right here. It's right here. Now, we, what, what's going on here is that we have another uh, area of rain developing, more convection developing right out ahead of this thing that's being pulled into it. So we'll see. Sometimes that will interact with it, and it'll cause it to weaken some. It'll cause it to weaken some. What do bills look like, Cassie, just on four? They're pretty high. Hold on. Are they still pretty high? Just kind of maybe if we can click on that real quick. Yeah. This kind of tells us, we kind of look at this to see, uh, we, we start to look at the, this is one of our products here. We don't show it very often, but this will really show you intensity, and we have maxed it out as far as this storm. Folks, it's moving almost due south. Yeah. It's, this is going to come into the city from the north for sure. Okay, so Guthrie, you're next. You're going to be the next city in line. It's going to come into Guthrie, and then from there, it's going to come into Edmond. Golf ball size hail, winds 60 miles per hour, maybe 70. Quarters and golf balls here. Quarters and golf balls northwest of Calumet. Okay, northwest of Calumet. Okay, let's go back to reflectivity on this, and uh, let's go ahead. Now, the whole line's filling in. This is what we said would happen during our earlier newscast. Looked like it was sure going to try. And that's exactly what it's doing. By the way, Cass, let's back out of this just for a second. So once again, we got a few storms trying to develop down here in Kiowa County into uh, Caddo County. We'll see if these can get going. So far, they're having trouble. The main game is running from Canadian County all the way into Missouri. But for our viewing area, it's from Payne County back down here. Okay, we're going to do a storm track on this whole line, and we'll get that going. And, uh, okay. Okay, I have not. Let's go ahead and take a look at our Guthrie cam. Control room, let's see what it looks like on our Guthrie cam. And uh, we need to get that camera turned to the north if we haven't already. Let's, let's go ahead and take a look at our Guthrie cam. There it is, coming in from the west and from the north. Boom, wow, look at that. Lots of lightning in Guthrie. I mean, it is, or just north of town. It's coming into Guthrie here shortly. So if you live in Guthrie, uh, you want to protect whatever you've left outside, your car, move it in the car park, carport, garage, cover it up. Whatever you want to do, okay? But uh, the hail sizes, nickel and dime, quarter, and there might even be some golf ball size hail. Okay, let's go back to link three, talk about where the tornado is. It is not touched down. The first area has weakened on the circulation. What do you got, Cass? I was getting the track ready. It is now ready on links four. If okay, you want to go there. all right, let's go to links four. And uh, what we're doing is the whole storm track on the whole line across the Oklahoma City area, okay? So let's just go through this together. Uh, Perkins, 830, Guthrie, 840, Meridian, 841, 
uh, El Reno, 844, Piedmont, 846. The whole line is coming across the metro. Everybody here in Oklahoma City will get rain, will get storms, and some of us will get severe weather, and some of us will lose power. Okay, that's going to be a problem moving forward. Power outages, you're going to have some of those. At the same time, yes, we're going to have power outages, and uh, it looks like possibly some wind damage and or some hail damage uh, with some of these storms. Okay, so once again, El Reno, 844, uh, Yukon, 9 o'clock, Edmond at about 9 o'clock. That's downtown Edmond. It'll be there earlier uh, up near Waterloo Road. Arcadia, 910, The Village, 911, Chandler, 920, downtown Oklahoma City, 927, and Tiger Safari at about 934, Midwest City at about 9. 38, which is going to be over in here. Okay. And David, so, the yeah. tornado warning has been canceled. Okay. The tornado warning has been canceled. And we talked about that area of circulation. Um, it has weakened. It has weakened a lot, but uh, we still have a new area that we're still watching here carefully. Okay. So let's go ahead and zoom on in. Let's lose go the, uh, let's three. go to links three. Go to links three and look at the line here filling in no longer uh, that tornado warning for that storm, but this thing is still spinning. Okay. It is still spinning. The whole line is filling in. It'll come across the city, coming in from the northwest. Okay, let's go to Alan Brosey now. Let's go to Alan Brosey. We'll take his shot. And uh, Alan, great shot there. Uh, looking back at that storm now, which is Alan is basically in Okarchi, looking off to his uh, west. Go ahead, Alan. What do you think? David, Big storm. That, go ahead. We have one just like that to our west. It looks just like that. We're looking north from Concho over Okarchi. That's a separate lowering from a storm that merged into this just a few minutes ago. Uh, the one over, just over west of uh, El Reno has a big scud bomb rising up into it. Uh, this one is very low to the ground. We can't tell if it's spinning or not. We just saw it. We're uh, going to stop and take a look at it for you. Back to you. All right. Great job there, Alan. I tell you what, Alan, you're right. That storm to your north and to your west, uh, like you said, those have merged. Now we're going to end up with just one big solid line. I know you know that as you look out, and that's going to sweep across the metro. So stay ahead of this thing. Let's bring it east. Let's bring it into the metro. We're talking about winds of, you know, 60 to 70 miles per hour with some nickel and dime and quarter size hail uh, with that. Let's go back to Links 3 control room and uh, go back to Links 3 and talk about the line. I want to point out there's not much going on now in Pawnee County, okay, and there's not much going on in Caddo County. A little storm down here near Anadarko, but the main bang is right here running from now south to Stillwater. We'll go ahead and zoom on in. The tornado warning is, is no longer there. That tight area of circulation that ramped up for about 10 minutes, uh, that is gone, but it is still spinning. So we just need to keep an eye on it because it wouldn't take much to ramp up. But I'll say this, though. As this line becomes one continuous line, uh, these storms begin to compete uh, for updraft space, if you will, and instability. So what happens is these storms are mainly more dangerous when they're by themselves, they're isolated, and they're able to tap into all that instability and uh, those other updrafts are not interfering with that one updraft that is spinning. But right now, what's good here is that this is turning into one solid line that will take your tornado threat and lower it, okay, while increasing your damaging wind threat. Also, your hail threat will decrease as well with this line. But uh, no doubt about it, this thing is gonna come right through the city. Everybody in Oklahoma City <clears throat> will see rain thunder, lightning. Some folks will see hail, others will not. And uh, some will see damaging winds, others will not as well. But uh, this is, again, coming in from the north. Okay, uh, I'll tell you what, Cassie, let's go to sheer rate. Just make sure there's nothing scary showing up. By the way, it's just north of Guthrie now. Go ahead and zoom on in to this. Let's go ahead and zoom on in here, Cass. See what's going on. Um, okay, so it's still there. This is what we've been tracking the whole time. Val's right there looking right at it. Val still has a, a, a fairly decent lowering here, which is going to be just north of Tom and Rob, which is going to be just uh, north of Guthrie. Guthrie's still down here. Okay, here's Guthrie right here. And, uh, okay, back out just a bit here, Cass. Here, here's Guthrie, okay? So, uh, again, this, this thing is, this, uh, Guthrie's right here. Okay, this thing continues to come in. It's just north of Guthrie now. Area of spin. Area of spin right there coming into Guthrie. You can see it now. It's beginning to ramp up. Let's go back to Val Caster and get an update from Val. And uh, Val, I'll tell you what, circulation still there. It's actually increased some. It's increased some just a bit. Go ahead, Val. Okay, David. And, and we're the camera right now. Our camera is looking is to the north-northwest. Uh, and we, we've been watching that area very, very closely, David. Right now, 
Uh, we're just to the southwest of that location, and we're starting to get a little bit of outflow picking up here, but uh, we're watching that. And, you know, there is still rotation right in that area, David. Uh, it it kind of comes and goes. It comes and goes. It's kind of fighting its outflow right now. But that's been a persistent area the whole time, and so it's going to have to be watched all the way down in the metro, I think. Yeah, no doubt about it. Hey, Val, real quick, uh, looking at winds where you are, I'm looking at 50 to 60, though. It's a north wind. What are your winds right there where you currently are? Do you have a north wind there? You should. All right, 50 miles an hour, David. Okay. Uh, we're, we've got wind, the highest wind gust about 50. Okay, the highest you've had has been about 50? Okay. Yes, right here. Okay, all right. Hey, control room. Okay, okay, there we go. All right, Val, let's keep bringing it in. It's going to come into Guthrie. Let's go back to Lynx 2 control room. Let's go to Lynx 2 here. And uh, let's go ahead and zoom on in here, Matt. Go ahead and zoom on in. And uh, here we go. Right here, we've got 52 mile per hour winds. This is where the area of circulation is. I want to point out it is broad. We don't see a real tight area of green up against a tight area of red. Okay, that's a good sign. But what we have here are winds now. Val, uh, just south of Val, are going to be close to 60 miles per hour. Folks, that's going to Guthrie and that's going to Edmond. Okay, 61 mile per hour wind. Okay, 61 mile per hour wind with that. There we go, 52, 61. Here's Guthrie High School. Uh, this is downtown Guthrie right here. Okay, downtown Guthrie is right here. And uh, we still got to adjust that, but uh, it's, it's right there. Let's go to Lynx 3. Let's go to Lynx 3. And uh, here we go. This is shear rate. Still have the area of spin. Go ahead and zoom on in, Cassie. I want to keep an eye on this. Tom is in Guthrie, and he's looking back to his northwest. Let's go to Tom Pastrano and get an update from Tom. Tom, it's coming right down the highway. That area of spin is increasing now some just to your northwest, just a few miles. It's just south of the river now, looking off to your northwest, Tom. And winds are going to be 60-plus miles per hour coming into Guthrie. Guthrie, prepare for damaging winds of in excess of 60 miles per hour. Go ahead, Tom. Tom? Distant wall clouds in my northwest. Um, I don't see any rotation or anything, but I can tell you the, the lightning is just absolutely incredible. I mean, it's, it's almost striking every second, and it, it's loud and it's bright. I mean, it, it is incredible out here. Back to you, David. Yeah, the lightning is just is one of the other big stories, folks. I mean, you cannot be outside. There may be kids playing outside. Remember, lightning can arc 10 to 15 miles away from these storms. Edmond is about 10 to 11 miles from Guthrie. Edmond right now could get lightning from these storms. Look at the lightning storm that's coming into the metro. It's even, there's so much lightning, it's interfering with our streaming video from our trackers. Okay, so let's go back to Lynx 3 and look at all the lightning here. Hundreds of lightning strikes, thousands of lightning strikes over the last several hours uh, with this line of storms, and it is increasing. Lightning strikes are just going up. Okay, so the whole line now will sweep across the metro. The whole line will sweep across all of Oklahoma City. Uh, the only place it might miss out is going to be maybe, maybe Mustang and Moore and Norman. But it wouldn't take much for this to go ahead and turn south and come into there. Okay, so once again, we have severe storms, nothing tornadic. We had a tornado warning about half an hour ago. It was spinning. It was spinning. But uh, it's no longer spinning as fast as it was. But we still have one area of spin now that's coming into Guthrie that we're watching. We have a lightning storm now in Guthrie, Logan County, coming south into the metro. We're going to have power outages here in Oklahoma City. That will happen. And uh, we're going to get some nickel and dime size hail uh, for sure. All right. And maybe even some quarter and maybe even some golf ball size hail. Okay. With this line as it comes in from the north. Okay. Let's go back to shear rate on Lynx 3, <clears throat> and then we're going to go to Velocity here. Let's go ahead and zoom on in. Uh, it's right over Guthrie, the shear rate. They're ramped up again, and now it's weakening. Uh, it's still there, though. It's just northwest of downtown Guthrie, about two miles. The, it's on top of the high school. Area of spin. Okay, so we have a weak area of spin here. Let's go to Velocity data cast. Let's go to, we'll try base out first. Okay, there it is. Let's stop it. Stop the laps. We'll query the data here. Okay, what do we have? It's got 43. Okay, let's go to, uh, let's go, yeah, storm relative. Okay. Th that's storm relative. Yeah, okay. Let's go back to base again one more time here, see what base is doing. It's a, it's a little more impressive here. 52, okay, all right. 
So again, this is going to go, uh, the worst part of the wind now um, is going to go right over and just west of downtown Guthrie. Downtown Guthrie is right here. It's going to go on and just west of downtown Guthrie. It's going to go right over, uh, well, Cedar Valley is back out to the west. So this is going to go on the western sides uh, of Guthrie. Up and down, again, downtown, yes, downtown Guthrie, and then on the western sides of town. Okay, moving from north to south, the area that you see in the blue, uh, we're looking at winds in there going to be 50 to nearly 60 miles per hour dropping south with a weak area of spin right here. Okay, weak area of spin. It's right over Guthrie. Okay, let's go back to Val, and then we're going to go back out to the Canadian County storm. Just get an update from Val on the wind and what's going on. Val, area of circulation, according to radar, is right above you. It's right above you. Give us an update on what you've had on the wind. Okay, David, um, you're right. The area of circulation, there's still a mezzo up there, and it's just on the north side of Guthrie right now, moving directly south. It's going to come right over Guthrie. Now, the thing that we've noticed, David, is that there's enough outflow here or, or north winds ahead of it. Uh, you could say that the mezzo or the rotation is kind of fighting with its outflow right now, so it's not as organized as it was earlier when we saw the funnel. Um, but nonetheless, I think we're going to see some strong winds move through Guthrie. We've seen winds in the low 50s uh, coming from the north, and it very easily could get up to 60 or above as this, move, as this thing moves through, David, especially right near where the mezzo is. And one other thing I want to point out, and this is probably the worst thing of all, is the lightning. There is a ton of lightning here. Uh, everybody in Guthrie really needs to be in their houses right now when this comes through, David. Yeah, no doubt about it. It is a lightning storm just as much as it is a wind and hail storm and a heavy rain event. Yeah, the lightning is just ferocious. Thousands of lightning strikes with this line uh, coming on in. Okay, Val's go, Val, go ahead, and, and uh, he's coming up on the, uh, the football field here. He's headed southbound, the football stadium here. The Rock is right in front of him, and he'll get back south, head south on division. He'll get back on I-35. He's on Oklahoma right now. Um, okay, so he's going through Guthrie. He's coming up to the corner. He'll make a left, and he'll keep heading south. Let's go to Tom. And uh, get an update from Tom Pastrano here in just a second. Let's stay with, oh, okay, let's go to Tom. That's fine. Tom, I want you to keep heading south, though. This thing's moving. Just keep going south with it. Stay out ahead of it. Go ahead and give me an update on your wind right there. Okay, our wind shifted. It is now um, east-northeast, it appears. Um, and that persistent wall cloud, it, isn't, it doesn't look as good as it did about five to ten minutes ago. Um, but the lightning still is increasing and is intense as, ooh, as ever and just striking all around us. Big, loud thunder boom. <laughs> Back to you, David. Yeah, great job, Tom. I tell you what, there is a ton of lightning. I mean, it's like right in front of these guys. You can see, oh, boom, there's, oh, wow, there's another one right there. So lots of lightning. You know, some storms that are severe will produce eh, low-end lightning. Yeah, they'll produce maybe over a couple of hours, maybe 30, 40, 50 strikes. It just all depends on the atmosphere. Every day, every storm event, it's a thumbprint. They're all different, right? They always give you a little bit something different here. This thing is producing a ton, and I mean a ton of lightning. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 3 and uh, take a look at some of the winds here going on. And once again, uh, severe storms in Canadian County. We're gonna go back out to Bobby Payne. Uh, let's jump in here, Cassie. Let's go ahead and zoom on in, then we'll do a storm track. I see you've got on Lynx 4. Uh, severe storms now. Let's go ahead and zoom in here a little closer. El Reno, get ready. Uh, Bobby Payne is right here, right over the Cherokee uh, Trading Post, running from there up to west and north of El Reno, up to Chester's Party Barn. We've got to get there someday. <laughs> Again, northwest of there. Here comes that line sliding southeast. Get ready, uh, Deer Creek. Get ready, Piedmont. We'll do a storm track here in just a second. The line, Cassie, is beginning to accelerate here to me. It looks like it's probably 25. I've got it moving at 25. Okay. All right. Great job, as always. It, it looks like it's beginning to accelerate now as we're going to get a, what we call a cold pool developing. Lots of rain, lots of wind, trying to push out ahead of it. Okay? So this is going to sweep across the metro. All right. Let's go back into Logan County here. Just slide up the line. Get ready. Edmund, everybody. Everybody in Oklahoma County, storms coming in. Winds will be as high as 50 to maybe as high as 60 miles per hour. Right now, it is not a... 90 mile per hour wind event. Okay, that's a good thing, but we're still looking at winds, you know, 50, 60 miles per hour, and we could jump up and get a quick 70. Guthrie, it's coming into town right now. Tom and Val are headed southbound and down. Let's get these guys into the metro, and uh, let's, and again, as these come in from the north, and we want to get uh, Alan and Bobby back here as well. Hey, uh, Matt, Matt, 
Go ahead and get Allen eastbound and down. Okay, get him east. Yep, get him east. Okay, so here come the storms now into North Oklahoma County. And by the way, Cass, we may want to switch to velocity at some point. Okay. And uh, switch over so we can start looking at some of these winds. Um, let's just be thinking about it here because we're getting close. Let's go back to velocity uh, of what we're using right now. Let's go back to TLX and just see what we have. And uh, just a big ball of wind right here. Just a big ball of wind now on the western sides of Guthrie, right here, down to Seward, down to Guthrie Lake. Uh, but right now the winds are not out of control. The winds are 40 to 50. That's good. We can handle 40 to 50 all day, right? Uh, 40 to 50, you'll have some power bumps. A few folks will lose power. The lightning will probably lose more power for people than the wind if the winds stay at this velocity right now, okay? This is 40 to 50 now. Uh, coming into, it's about ready to cross uh, into Oklahoma County from the north. Cassie, let's back out of this just a bit. Just roll out a couple of clicks. And uh, here's the Oak Cliff Fire Department. Big ball of wind in the green. Dropping south. Big ball of wind. This thing is moving almost due south. <clears throat> and uh, it'll go ahead and come on in. Oak Tree, prepare for winds. 50 to maybe 60. Going right down I-35. So the strongest winds are going to be from Edmond, in the northwestern sides of Oklahoma City, and I'm talking about Edmond over to Mitch Park, and then eventually out towards Deer Creek, Portland Avenue. You folks in the northwest, prepare for winds 50 miles per hour, maybe as high as, as 60. This is a, the green you see on the radar. That's a south wind. That's a north wind blowing to the south, if you will, coming in from the north. Okay, let's go back out into Canadian County here in Oklahoma City. Let's go back out west. Let's check in with Alan Brosey. Alan's right here. Let's put reflectivity on. And there we go. Alan, what do you think? Now, this thing is right behind you. I know you're coming on Northwest Highway. Great job. And, uh, Alan, your storm is beginning to pick up a little bit of speed now. It's beginning to more line itself out. It's turning. It's developing a cold pool. It's trying. It so go ahead. Give me an update on what you're seeing right now behind down north, you. It's racing right down Northwest Highway behind me. We're at Chick's party. They're okay for the moment, but they're going to have some wind and rain this minute. Uh, this is turning to a kill lowerings with it we cannot confirm if they're rotating but i would not be surprised if we have a couple of isolated low okay all right al all right alan's in a alan's in a bad area okay let's go back to links four we'll check back in with alan uh we'll check back in with alan okay here's a storm track here's your timeline oklahoma city here's your timeline uh guthrie now el reno 848 piedmont 849 yukon 907 union city 908, Edmond, 910, The Village, 915, Arcadia, 918, Mustang, uh, 926, Chandler, 926, Luther at about 927. Okay, so here we are at 846. If they pick up speed, they'll be there a little bit sooner. All right, they're not going to slow down any. If anything, they're going to gain a little bit of speed, okay? But uh, everything here sliding off to the uh, southeast now. Downtown Oklahoma City at about... 9.32. Cassie, go ahead and lapse that. Let's see what it looks like here. Go ahead and lapse that. Just Okay, yeah, still moving off east-southeast. I'm trying to get my bearings straight here on uh, what we're doing out here to the west. Okay, all right, Alan's back in. We'll check back in with him coming up. Okay, so yeah, moving, still moving east-southeast. Okay, so Edmond at about 9.10. Uh, the Village, 9.18. Chandler, 9.26. Downtown Oklahoma City, 9.32. Midwest City, 9.43. And more, more right now at about 940. Now, you folks in more, I think you're going to get some of the action as well as it comes in uh, from the northwest. Has Velocity Data, has it updated yet, yet on the new? Let's, let's switch radars here. Check it. It just did its first okay. scan. So. Okay. Uh, once again, a line of severe storms. We had the one tornado warning earlier southwest of Orlando, and that has now gone away. We've had some weaker areas of spin right along this leading edge, right up in here. As a matter of fact, there's a little area of spin right here, uh, but nothing too crazy with that, okay? Uh, let's go to Lynx 3 and uh, take a closer look at Lynx 3. And uh, this is our live, correct? No. Okay, no. let's go to our... Live is just now coming in. Okay, just now um, coming around. It, that's on Lynx 1. Okay. It looks pretty intense. Okay, let's go back to... Yep, yeah, there it is. Okay, and this is going to be this wind... This ball of wind up here, and I say that because wind is 
it, it, you know, it's fluid, right? I mean, we have, we have rain, we have just a big ball here that's trying to shove to the south. And uh, the strongest winds now are going to be south of Highway 33, west side of Guthrie, down to and just north of Oak Tree. It's right here. Cassie, let's go ahead and zoom into some of this. This is going to be a little hot. It's going to be a little hot here, but uh, winds are still going to be, uh, we think, 50 to 60 miles yeah, per hour. That's got 79. Really that's, going to be, that's going to be hot, too hot, but we still, really, we're thinking winds 50 to 60. 63 on TLX. Uh, 63 on TLX. Yeah. Okay. Is that on base or, ref or base. base? Okay. So 50 to 60 is, is, is where we think we are right now, maybe 60, 65. And that's going to be this ball of wind now, west sides of Guthrie, down to Seward. Uh, it is dropping south. Okay? It's dropping south. Let's go to Lynx 3. And, uh, okay, this is Lynx 3 here. Let's go ahead and see the ball here. This ball right in here, the green, pressing south. It's going to come into Oak Tree. Uh, oh, you folks in Oak Tree, North Edmond, winds 50 to maybe 60 miles per hour. Again, as it comes in from the north. Okay, let's go back out into Canadian County here. Talk about the wind out here. And we'll go to Bobby Payne. And uh, Bobby's right here. I don't see crazy wind out here. Let's turn reflectivity on and see what's going on with the wind. These have weakened. Uh, these have weakened some out west. Let's go to Bobby Payne, get an update. He's on I-40. And uh, Bobby, those storms out there have come down just a little bit. The Ville, the Villes have come down some. Uh, kind of from the west of El Reno. They've weakened some for sure. Uh, what's the strongest winds you've had here in the last few minutes now coming into El Reno? Uh, David, I've had about 25 to 30 mile per hour winds. Not too bad out west of El Reno, but I'm looking north of El Reno now. Quite, it's probably about uh, four to five miles. And it looks like it's a very large uh, shelf cloud or a very large roaring. We're trying to monitor that area right now, but it looks like it's a very significant roaring to me. Uh, now, it may be associated with the shelf cloud, but it is, it's almost due com completely vertical uh, on the leading edge of that uh, gust front. Back to you, David. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, you're right, Bobby. And here's the deal. We've got to watch out for little spin-ups on this front lip. That's exactly what Bobby's talking about. It, is that uh, he can see these little lowerings here. Let's go to Alan Brosey. Let's take Alan's shot control room. Alan is in Piedmont, just southwest of Piedmont here. And uh, Alan looking off here northwest. And uh, I tell you what, that line, there it is. Boy, look at the plates. Look at the plates lined up and the uh, lightning there, Alan. Uh, that storm is still severe right there, no doubt about it. Go ahead, give me an update. That is correct, David. The plates you see are the front edge. But, oh, just right there, you can see the lowering. Just west of Piedmont, we cannot confirm rotation, but it would not surprise me to see some QLCS-type spin-ups on the front edge of this, David. Very, very low to the ground, uh, coming straight into the Piedmont area. We're on North Ex Ex excuse me, Expressway, looking to the northwest and at Frisco Road. And you can see over the lights of the house there, the lowering is very, very low to the ground. And this thing is approaching. You can see it right there. Uh, it's approaching the Piedmont area and coming down the Northwest Expressway area, David. We haven't had, we're out of the winds at the moment, but it's, it's coming probably 30, 35 miles an hour down Northwest Expressway. So it's just a, a matter of minutes before it comes into Piedmont. Back to you, David. Yeah, okay, there we go. So winds are going to be, you know, 40 to 50 uh, out where Allen is. There might be a gust in there at 60. It wouldn't take much to ramp up and to easily produce a wind gust of 60 miles per hour. So a tremendous amount of lightning, yes. Uh, for sure, a lot of, lot of lightning coming with this whole line. Nickel, dime, quarter size hail. And uh, with that, we're talking about winds 50 to maybe 60 miles per hour coming in Oklahoma City. Okay, let's go to Lynx 4. We're going to do a storm track. And uh, let's see what we're doing here on that. Ca uh, Cassie, go ahead. And I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to do, this might be, this might be a little far south. And let's go ahead and lapse that. Let's just see here. Yeah, it's still, um, Amber, down this far south and west in the box, you might not be in it. I think Moore's in it for sure. South Oklahoma City, maybe as far south as Norman. Yeah, bring it. I tell you what, bring it. Yeah, just go ahead and bring it a little further this way, a little more up here. Uh, now, it, uh, it, yeah, it could develop. It could develop a little further west. That's still good. That's still good. Let's stop the laps here just a second. Uh, okay, Piedmont, 9 o'clock or 8.54. Really moving into Piedmont right now. Uh, Union City, 9 o'clock, Yukon, 904, Edmond, 913, The Village, 920, Arcadia, 922, Tuttle, 925, Luther, 929, uh, Jones at about 940. Downtown Oklahoma City right now, downtown about 936, 
Chandler at about 947. Which, okay, we'll get back to Val here coming up. Uh, Moore, 949. Midwest City at about 948. Okay, Choctaw, 951. So uh, the whole line will move across the entire Oklahoma City area. Okay, let's go back to Val. And uh, Val is right back into Logan County here. And I know what he's looking at. He, there is a, Val, there, there, here's the deal. Right where you are, Val, there's an inflow notch on top of you pulling into that storm. No doubt about it. It's just to your south-southwest, it looks like, uh, from what I'm looking at. And it's moving due south. So go ahead. Give me an update on what you're seeing right there. Okay, David, straight west of us, just not far, but straight west of us, we have a low ring uh, that's starting to solidify a little bit again. I don't know if you can see that. We got our night vision camera on right there, and that's looking due west. That's looking west, right? Uh, looking straight west at where, where we're looking here, and we're, we are at the south Guthrie exit. So we're kind of looking towards the town of Seward right now. And uh, it, we've got inflow, by the way. We've got southeast winds at our location. So that's kind of what makes me think this is even more significant, David. Yeah, hey, Val, this thing is really tightening up now. And, Val, I'll, t I'll tell you, um, it's still fairly broad, but it looks almost like a little small MCV, but it's tight between you and Seward. And it's getting tighter here, Val. Every time the radar, every time the radar beam comes around, again, with the Next Gen Live or a million watt radar, that area of circulation is beginning to spin up now, just north of Oak Cliff Fire Department, and that's going to Oak Tree. Here it is right here, okay? That's shear rate. Uh, this is Oak Tree. And uh, once again, this is dropping almost straight south. Let's go to Max Rot, Cassie. Let's see what we have on that. You can see right here. Okay, now let's go back to shear rate one more time. Okay, there it is. Area of spin. All right, and go ahead and lapse that, Cass. Maybe give us like 30 minutes in here. It went 30. Yeah, there, that's fine. There we go. There we go. It's south of Seward. Okay, Val and Tom are both headed south. Uh, let's go to Tom Pastrano. He's looking off to his west. And to Tom, go ahead, give me an update. Looks like that area of circulation is beginning to tighten. And it uh, looks like that's now coming into, uh, again, near Seward and just north of Oak Cliff Fire Creek. Department. And it's going to Oak Tree and west of Oak Tree as well. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, that's right, David. Uh, we've continued on south because the rain caught up to us. But as we were looking west, just like Val said, there was a significant lowering in there. Uh, there was a lot of motion. And it, it, just like all the other ones, that you know, it took shape really quick. So if anything, there's probably some very strong winds in there. Didn't see any power flashes, but we're continuing south towards Edmond to get a bit better vantage point. Back to you, David. Okay, and uh, once again, uh, Tom, here's the deal. That area of circulation is tightening up now. Due west of you, one, two, three, four, five miles due west of your location right now, Tom. It's tightening up four miles exactly due west of where you are on I-35. And Tom's about six miles south of downtown Guthrie and he's three miles north of Waterloo Road. Okay, Let, Okay, let's go back to Valcaster. Val's got winds of 50, and by the way, Val is not in the strongest wind. Let's go to Valcaster. Val, the strongest winds are just to your west. Area of circulation, Val, is to your west as well. Go ahead. All right, 54, we just had a wind gust of 5-4, and it's getting stronger as I speak right now, and the wind is from the east, David. The wind is from the east-northeast, and uh, we just had a gust of 54, and it's, it's averaging 40 to 45 as I speak. And, uh, I mean, it, it's blowing sideways from the east to the west. I think it's all going right into that circulation uh, just to our west-southwest, David. Hey, Val, here's the deal. We're going to go ahead and issue a, a News 9 tornado warning. Uh, let's go to velocity data. Folks, this is going to be a tornado warning now for southern Logan County. Let's go to Link 3. Oh, there wow. it is. Tornado warning now. Okay, look how fast that took place, folks. If you've been watching this for any time at all, remember how we were talking about this swirl dropping south? Tighter, tighter, tighter tornado warning right here. Let's stop the laps. Let's stop the laps. Let's zoom in here, Cassie. You folks in Oak Tree, you folks in Oak Tree, west and east of Kelly, I don't care which side, Oak Tree, here it is. This is Charter Oak, okay? This is going to be Charter Oak. Uh, this is going to be uh, eastern. This is going to be wet. Western's right here. Here's Santa Fe. This is going to be Kelly. This is Kelly Avenue right here. It, the tornado's going to be at Charter Oak and Kelly Avenue. Tornado is going to be at Charter Oak and Kelly Avenue. Tom, it's to your west, four miles. Hank's coming in from the west. Tornado is going to be right here. Let's go to shear rate. I'm going to hold my finger here. Watch how this looks. Boom. Tells the whole story. Let's go to Max Rot. Boom. 
Okay, there's where the tornado is going to be if it's on the ground right now. Let's go to CC, Cassie. Let's check out CC, see if we have any debris lofted in the air. On that, we'll take a look. Uh, no, we don't, but it is becoming more negative, but it's not picking up any debris in the air. We're looking for a blue hole right here. We're looking for a blue area to develop. I don't see one. Let's go back to velocity here. Tornado warning now. This is going to be for Southern Logan County. Get through, you're out of it. Edmond, Northwest Edmond, you are in it. If you live west of Eastern in Edmond, west of Eastern, you're going to be in it from you from Eastern to the West. Kelly, up and down Kelly. If you live between Eastern and Kelly and Santa Fe, you need to go to your safe spot right now. The tornado is going to be right here. Okay, it's now south of Charter Oak. Okay. It's south of Charter Oak, and it's dropping south now at about 20 miles per hour. It's dropping south at about 20 miles per hour as it comes into uh, Oklahoma County. Okay, this is going to be a tornado warning now. Uh, there it is. It's going right down Santa Fe. This is western. It's not over western. It's damaging winds are at western, 60-mile-an-hour winds. The circulation is going to be right here. It's on Santa Fe, and it's at Waterloo Road, one mile north. Okay, there's the circulation. Let's go to Max Rot. Once again, tornado warning. Now crossing, coming up to Waterloo Road. If you live at Waterloo Road and Kelly or Santa Fe, you need to go to your safe spot. Oak tree, oak tree, oak tree. Safe spot. Safe spot now. You have to go. If you live in a mobile home, you can't stay in the mobile home, folks. Damaging winds and or the tornado uh, will flip you. Center part of the house, lowest level. This is going to be North Oklahoma County. This is Oak Tree Country Club, Cross Timbers Elementary School. This is going to be, again, Kelly Avenue right here. This is Kelly. This is Santa Fe. Uh, this is Eastern. Okay. And Oak Tree is right here. Circulation now. Let's go back to velocity data. Let's go. Okay. We'll take Val shot here coming up. There's where the tornado is going to be. Let's go back to Valcaster. And uh, Val, it could be on the ground. The circulation is pretty tight. It's not crazy tight, but it's tight enough. Go ahead, Val. Okay, David. So uh, you look at our shot right there. We are right now coming up on Charter Oak, and we're almost looking due west. We're kind of west-southwest. That right there is the big lowering. That's it. That's the lowering. Whenever we get out of the trees, you can see it a lot. There it is right there. There it is right there. It's real close to the ground, David. We've been looking really, really hard for power flashes. Haven't really seen much. No power flashes yet that we've seen. Okay. But uh, there's your lowering right there, Yeah, David. Yeah, there it is. This is the right side of the lowering. Uh, the tornado sirens are now blowing in Edmond. That's a good idea. That's a good idea, especially in West Edmond here. West Edmond. It's going to be west of I-35. It's, it's west of the Broadway extension. It's going to be west of Broadway extension in Edmond. It's going to be out near Santa Fe and Kelly, and it's going to go right over, it's going right over Oak Tree. It's going right over Oak Tree. Okay, so let's go back to it here. Here's the tornado right here. It's now coming into Oak Tree. We said this 15, 20 minutes ago. If you live in Oak Tree, lowest level, center part of the house. If you have a two-story house, you've got to get to the lowest level, center part of the house. If you live in Oak Tree, on Kelly, or west of Oak Tree, or east of Oak Tree a mile, you've got to go to your safe spot once again. Tornado now would be crossing, will be crossing, uh, I, uh, excuse me, Waterloo Road. Let's go to shear rate on this and take a closer look on shear rate. There it is, right over Oak Tree. It's right over Oak Tree, and it's going due south. After that, it's going to Mitch Park. If you live north or south of Mitch Park, you have to go to your safe spot right now. You've got about 10 minutes, okay? You've got about 10 minutes, okay? Uh, right here, that's what I'm talking about. Let's go to velocity data. Take a look, see what our numbers are here. Uh, once again, go ahead and zoom on in here, Cass. Let's get the street back, uh, streets back on here. Go ahead and zoom on in. Okay, might have weakened slightly. Might have, might have weakened a little bit. Okay, okay, here's Mitch Park. Okay, back out just a click and can go to the north. Circulation is going to be right here. Okay, so it's right over western sides of Oak Tree. It's on the western sides of Kelly, it looks like to me. Here's Kelly right here. It's in between Kelly, West Oak Tree, the, the west side of the golf course, in Santa Fe. Put shear rate on here, please, real quick. Okay. All right. And uh, go TLX. 
Shear rate? That is TLX. Okay, that is TLX? Yes. Okay, and then go to max rot and see what it's doing. What time is it here? 903? Okay, so it has weakened some. It has weakened some. Tom's coming in from the east. Let's go to Tom Pastrano, and Hank's coming in from the south. Let's go to Tom. And uh, Tom, I, it's still spinning. I tell you what, it's not as tight, Tom. Power, power flash. Power flash. Okay, go ahead, Tom. Power flash now. Tom, you're on, are you on Waterloo Road? I am. I'm on Waterloo Road, and, you know, right in front of me, I just had a power flash. The power did go out. Okay. Um, I can't tell it. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. Tornado. Tornado on the ground. This is a tornado now crossing, crossing Waterloo Road. Crossing Waterloo Road. Tornado on the ground now. Folks, it looks like it's trying to come into Oak Tree. It looks like the tornado is going to be... Tom, where are you right now? What's your street? Where are you? Uh, you're, you're at Kelly. Okay. You're at Kelly. Right? Tom Pastrano. Uh, Cassie, zoom on in. Let's go back to Link 3 control room. Go back to Link 3. Link 3, back up, back up, back up. Go to the north, go to the north. Here's Tom. Tom's coming up on Kelly. Okay, so the circulation is to his west. So it's, it's missed... It's Miss Kelly's right here. He had two power flashes. That's the tornado. It's going to be right here. It's to his west. It's dropping south. Could have been, could have been a power flash from wind damage, but it also easily could have been a small, weak, brief spin up. Again, uh, western sides of Oak Tree between Kelly and Santa Fe. If you live, again, Santa Fe between Kelly and Santa Fe to the south, and if you live in between over as far west as western uh, from Waterloo to Sorghum Mill, down to Coffee Creek, down to Mitch Park. You need to be in your safe spot right now. Let's go to Max Rot. Let's go to Max Rot on this. There it is. Circulation. Okay, let's get a shear rate and see what we have going on. All right, there it is. It's still there. Still there. Uh, let's go back to uh, reflectivity here real quick. Let's go back to reflectivity. And here it is. Everything's wrapping in. This is where the circulation is going to be. It's right here. It's right here. Tom's looking back to his west-southwest. Here it is. See the reflectivity, how it curls around? Okay, so it's in between now. Let's get our bearings straight here. Uh, here's Oak Tree uh, Golf and Country Club. Uh, this is Mitch Park. This is Covell. This is going to be right here. This is the hook. Tornado's going to be right here where my hand is. It's going to be actually right here. It's going to be off to Tom's West, Southwest. Possible tornado on the ground about three minutes ago with power flashes. Uh, crossing Waterloo Road. We had a few. Let's go back to Tom and get an update. Where's Val Caster? Let's get an update from Tom here. And, uh, Tom, any more power flashes? Go ahead. What do you see to your west-southwest? No more power flashes. Oh, yep, there's another one right as I spoke. Just had another power flash. Another one right there. Big power flashes right in front of me. A very strong winds right now, at least 50 to 60. Just had a tree down right there. So we are getting closer to what probably could be more than likely is a tornado in front of us. It is rain. Oh, there's another one right in front of us. Tornado. Right yep. in front of us. Yeah, yeah, Val. It's, I think we have a tornado. Yeah, Tom, I, I agree. I agree. So, okay, it's going to be west now. It, it's sliding west-southwest. This thing is really trying to build southwest. Okay, let's go back. Reflectivity. Oak tree, you're in the clear. Forget about oak tree. It's right here. It, it did this. It was coming south, folks. Now it's done this. It's done one of these. It's actually built to the west-southwest. Okay, this is where the tornado is right here. Tom's right here. He's going down Waterloo Road or Northwest 248. It's all the power flashes from Tom. And the control room, let's make sure we keep, yeah, keep Tom shot, lower left, looking for power flashes. Okay, so let's go to shear rate. I, I tell you what, let's go to reflectivity here. Let's go to velocity, my bad. Let's go to velocity here. Okay, so again, either damaging winds or, the, or a possible tornado. It's not as tight as what it was. It's not as tight. It's not as tight. It's either going to be damaging winds. The circulation is not that tight right now, but it was tight there for about 10 minutes. Okay, so there's, there's storm relative. Okay, let's go to base. Okay, this is, and this is all, okay, this is all toward. Okay, it's all good. Okay, now let's go to shear rate. Is that the latest on that? Yes. Okay, nothing there. Let's see, Max okay. Rod, about the same. Yep, and uh, let's go back to uh, base velocity here. It's going to be to a southwest, and, uh, okay, Cassie, back, yeah, back out of this just a second here. A couple of areas going on. What you got? Hank said he has a, a shot, too. Okay, I'm going to go to Hank here in just a second. Um, wind increasing a Waterloo Road coming in from the north. Yeah, damaging winds now coming out of Logan County. See the blues? Lazy E over to Oak Cliff Fire Department. Winds are going to be 50 to 60 miles per hour. 
Edmund, you're in the line of fire. This is going to come in from the north, coming in hard and fast. That area of circulation, again, has weakened some. Uh, that were, again, where Tom was. We haven't seen any power flashes here. And velocity data uh, now is beginning to lose that stronger area of circulation. Okay, but we, we can't confirm. Here's the deal. Uh, if, it, if, it, if, if it were a tornado, the circulation was definitely there, but it wasn't extremely tight. And it wasn't like an, an EF2, EF3, EF4. If anything, it, was a, it would have been a weak tornado as it was crossing, uh, excuse me, as it was crossing Waterloo Road, and it was going just on and just west of Oak Tree. Okay, so let's talk about where it is now. Circulation now coming into Rose Creek, damaging winds from the north, 50 to 60 miles per hour. More damaging winds over Piedmont and Sundance as well. Yes, damaging winds now at Piedmont. That's where Alan Brosey is. Let's go to Alan and get an update from Alan on the wind. And Alan, keep headed east, bring it into the metro, keep moving east southeast, Alan Brosey on the wind there. And, Alan, we're getting winds 50 to 60, at least that velocity Power data. Flash. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alan Brosey. Okay, David. Can you hear me, David? Yes, I can. Go ahead. You're hot. Okay, yeah. We're, we're at the Kilpatrick Turnpike and Northwest Highway, and we just saw a power flash straight north of us. So that wind that's coming through the Piedmont area is, uh, is very strong right now. We're uh, getting intense lightning, a lot of wind. We were in about 50-mile-per-hour winds. Uh, we just busted out of that. We're going to go ahead and continue down Northwest Expressway and give you updates, but we have seen a power flash to our north, so uh, the wind is here. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job there, uh, Alan. Once again, Alan coming in from the west. We have two storms that are severe. Like we said an hour or two hours ago, we'd get slammed from the north, and we were going to get slammed from the west. That's exactly what's happening. These storms are going to merge together right over Oklahoma City, right over the heart of the city. It's going to be amazing to watch over the next half hour or so as we get okay as we get two storms together what'd you say jen 3400 in guthrie that number we have 3400 customers without power that's mainly in guthrie that's about ready to double if not triple if not go sky high as this thing comes in from the north so we have two technically we have three areas of wind southern logan county headed to arcadia headed to east edmond we have downtown Edmond over to Rose Creek, winds in here 50 to 60, and then we have damaging winds coming out of Piedmont right over Sundance Airport, back down to Northridge Elementary School. That's headed to Bethany, that's headed to War Acres, and that's headed to downtown Oklahoma City. This whole line is accelerating southeast now at about 25 to 30 miles per hour. Let's go to Tom's shot and get an update from Tom Pastrano on the wind. It looks ferocious. Tom, give us an update on your wind right there. Uh, looks like the wind was hammering you there for a second, but maybe it backed off. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, that's right, David. We had winds over 70. I, I rolled down the window, and you could hear it screaming through the power lines. We had branches, tree branches falling all around us. Uh, we can finally see again, but that was intense there for a few minutes. Uh, the power is back on in this area. It's been off where we were on Waterloo Road for quite a while. Back to you, David. Okay, all right. Great job there, Tom. Yeah, and... Uh, I tell you what, let's go to Hank Brown. Hank is right at the front lip of the winds now, coming in from the north. And uh, there we go, Hank. I see where you are. You're just, it looks like uh, you're going to be uh, southwest sides of Edmond. 30. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Hank. Yeah. I'm at 33rd in Santa Fe, and this is looking due north. And this is just the leading edge of those heavy winds, that bright green on the velocity. That's what's starting to come to us. We still have winds from the east at the moment so we're going to get hit with north winds here in a minute but with those winds in perpendicular directions it's not out of the question that we might see a little spin up so this is looking north on the southwest side of Edmond. david back to you okay all right great job there hank stay with it here hank's going to keep uh staying with this wind what he'll do is he'll go up into it he'll tap it and then he'll come south he'll get up into it and tap it and see what the winds are and uh, we'll confirm on the ground what we're seeing from our trackers versus what we're seeing from our live radar. So uh, here comes the wind machine coming across the metro. Winds 50 to 60 miles per hour. Uh, there will be people in the dark. Remember your phone, your News 9 app, news9.com. You can watch the streaming. We're live on your phone right now. So if your power goes out and your phone is charged, you're good. All right? You're all good. Just keep the phone handy, and we'll be right here with this storm. Okay, let's go back to reflectivity and talk about the heavy rain coming in. I want to get into that here well, quickly here. I've got here. the track actually okay. on Lynx 4 Let's that go. shows all of it. Let's do it. Let's go to Lynx 4. Let's go to Lynx 4 control room. 
and uh, once again doing a storm track. And, and uh, next time, we'll, Cassie will take this out a little farther to include Shawnee. Uh, but right now we're looking Shawnee's at Shawnee's in there. Uh, yeah, my bad. I need to apologize to you <laughs> and to the city of Shawnee. And, and to the city of Shawnee, <laughs> you're there. Okay, uh, Luther. Uh, 914, the Village, 920, Jones, 927, downtown Oklahoma City, 936. Okay, that's downtown. A lot of folks may be out at the restaurants, whatever, on the lake or downtown Oklahoma City, midtown, out on the patio, watching all the lightning. Lightning from this storm can now reach downtown. If you're on a patio in downtown Oklahoma City, bring everybody in. This thing is a lightning storm producing a lot of lightning. And lightning can arc upwards of 15 miles away from the storm. So what I mean is lightning can here be now right here and it can be in downtown Oklahoma City just like that, okay? So anyway, here we go. The downtown Oklahoma City, 936. Choctaw, 939. Midwest City, 941. Moore, 953. Norman, 1012. Shawnee, 1013. Pink, 1020. Tecumseh, 1023. But it will swing across all of Oklahoma City. Just a large, massive storm. We just have one big storm. Now, I want to point out we have another severe storm down here uh, west, southwest of Carnegie. Uh, it is not tornadic. It's, it's just severe. Winds are going to be 60 miles per hour, nickel and dime size hail with that. Okay, nothing crazy, but it's now coming into Carnegie and it's going to go on. He's just south of Carnegie. Okay, we're keeping an eye on that quarter size hail with that one. Let's come back to the metro here and uh, let's see what's going on. Big, one large, big storm. Coming into Oklahoma County, moving southeast at about 25 miles per hour. Everybody's going to get in on the action. The Calumet storm is weakening. Okay, there's some good news. The Calumet storm is weakening. The severe storm now is running from the west Oklahoma City area across the metro. Okay, let's get a velocity data. Let's go ahead and go back to Lynx 3 if we could. Okay, Lynx 3. Take a look at it here. And what's going on right here, Cass? I know, I was looking at that earlier. Yeah, Alan, Alan's right in the thick of that. Okay, okay, put on shear rate. We have another couplet trying to develop. It's right here, though. It's right here. Let's go to velocity data. Let's go to uh, Max Rot. Yeah, there it is. There's something going on right here. Uh, a little bit of a little bit of an inflow notch developing right over Alan Brosey. Let's go to Alan. And uh, Alan, you are right in the middle of an inflow notch now. Uh, there's a hook developing right over you. You are in the inflow notch. When you look at it there, give me an update. What are your winds right now? Uh, you should have either a northwest wind or a southeast wind where you are. But that thing is trying to tighten up, Alan, right over you. Go ahead. Okay, David, we're at Northwest Expressway and just past Council Road. We're at Glade right now. And uh, we've got north winds probably 20 miles per hour. This is the same inflow notch we were watching just a few minutes ago and saw power flashes from Northwest Expressway and the Kilpatrick Turnpike. It's moving to the southeast. It's moving towards downtown. We're trying to maintain with it. Uh, we don't see any features right now because it's it's right over us. Okay, yeah, you, Earl's just uh, Earl's telling me the winds are coming up right now. Oh yeah, yeah, we just uh, just got slammed with uh, probably 45, 50 mile per hour winds now. Okay, okay. At, uh, and, and on Alan, Rockwell. Oh, you're on and Rockwell. They're coming out of the north. Okay, yep, north yep. wind. You're at Rockwell and, and Northwest Expressway, correct? That's correct, and we're headed uh, southeast on the expressway. Just got slammed with about a 45, 50 mile per hour wind. Okay. And uh, got debris flowing uh, across the street, uh, you know, but we don't we don't see any damaging uh, uh, debris at the at the moment, just trash. But it's definitely definitely blowing, David. Trees blowing, the flags blowing, and uh, anyway, it's a uh, it's a north wind. It's a straight north wind headed south. Back to you. Okay, there we go. Big time wind uh, coming in from the north. Every now and then, this thing will tighten up. Let's go back to reflectivity here. And here's what I'm talking about right here. Watch this right here. Now this is really cool. Watch. Right there, right west of Wiley Post. Go ahead, Cass. Let's go ahead and zoom on into this. Right here, it's right over. It's right over Lake Overholster. To watch this right here. Let's stop the laps. Right here. It's just north of Lake Overholster. This little thing, you're thinking, really? What? Yeah, that right there is a little bit of a spin going on where this thing's trying to tighten up. Okay, Alan, it's right in behind Alan. Alan's talking about he's got a north wind, as he should. He's got a north wind on the wrap of this. This is what the air is flowing into this counterclockwise, right? Here's News 9. Uh, this is the village, North Park Mall, back to Ski Island, Kilpatrick, Edmond, Deer Creek, getting hammered right now with wind and some hail. And uh, let's go ahead with this, uh, Cassie, and let's go to shear rate on this. Okay, there's where that's beginning to increase a little bit. Let's go to Max Rot, see what we have out of that. A little bit of spin going on now. Okay, that's not too impressive so far. Mm -hmm. 
okay? All right, let's go to velocity data, and let's back out just a bit, talk about the wind. And, all right, let's, we'll go to Hank here, coming up. All right, so damaging winds now. We're not, right now, we're not looking at winds 80, 90 miles per hour. That is not the case. We're looking at winds 50 to 60. That's gonna give us power bumps, that's gonna give you power outages, and uh, that's gonna bring down some tree limbs and things like that, okay? Heavy rain, a tremendous amount of lightning. The green that you see on this map, this is Oklahoma County, that's the north wind, okay? Notice how the north wind is gobbling up the red. That's because the north wind is pressing south. So this is a north wind pressing south. Winds are 50 to 60 miles per hour. Let's go to Val Castor. Let's bring up Val Schott and go to Val and uh, get an update from him. And uh, Val, we've had power outages. We've had power flashes. We're looking at that area of spin now. It has weakened what you saw early. What Val, what you were on early, that's long gone. But now we're transitioning to more of a damaging wind threat. Tell us what's going on with you. I see you are now in South Edmond here, just far north Oklahoma City. Go ahead, Val. Yeah, that's right, uh, David. The original circulation that we had been watching uh, just to the west of 35 there looks like it occluded, and uh, pretty quickly it all happened really, really fast. So we've noticed that there is some strong winds back over here to the east side, pretty much over on I-35, and we're going to try and stay in probably the strongest winds as we can as this thing moves through the city and watch just to see if there's anything else that happens as far as circulations, David. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, Val, I tell you what, just just keep, just just keep, you know, really, Val, just kind of hang where you are. Let that come into the north on top of you here, and 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 don't go any further west because uh, we I need you a little bit farther east. And by the way, Val Castor, the strongest winds. There's two areas, are we're near Tom and also where Hank are, but also Arcadia. And Bobby has power flashes as well. Let's go to Hank, get an update from Hank now. And uh, let's go to Hank. Hank, what are your winds there? Tell me exactly where you are. What's your location? David, I'm at 33rd in Santa Fe, and I'm looking east. And um, right now, the winds have been as high as 50. They're about a sustained 40. I'll zoom in here real quick where you can just kind of see how the trees are blowing here. And like what you were saying about the power bumps that are going to happen, you can see those power lines in the top of my shot there that are dancing around. So this is 33rd Street uh, coming into the southwest side of Edmond right now from 33rd and Santa Fe is what you're looking at right now, David. Okay, so uh, once again, what are your winds at 33rd and Santa Fe and Edmond? What are your wind speeds right there? Um, they're, they're, they're 50s it plus, 50, 55. Okay. Uh, if you can tell, man, it, it almost looks like a hurricane. Yeah, here we go. So, yeah. It's right yeah. now. We're rolling on Hank, correct? Yeah. Hey, great job, Hank. Keep bringing it in. And uh, look at the wind there. We'll keep that shot going here. Okay, that's going to be a north wind ripping to the south now. Winds are going to be 50 to 60 miles per hour. This is at 33rd in Santa Fe uh, in Edmond, okay? All of Edmond will experience some wind, some worse than others, as it comes in from the north. Let's go to Lynx 3 here. And another something, watch, watch this, folks. Let's go to Lynx 3. Look at this right here. Look at this little hook develop right there. See that? That's why Hank has that north wind. He's on the back side of the hook. This is another area of spin developing. I'm not saying it's going to produce a tornado, but it is a mesocyclone that develops. They develop quickly. You get damaging winds. Sometimes you might get a tornado, but you get damaging winds right there. Now let's go to velocity data and see what we have out of this. It's right there, a little area of spin. And notice how there is a weakness in the greens. The bright greens are not so much in the center. That's because they're weaker. That's because that's where that area of spin is. It's broad, but the winds are weaker inside the donut hole, which is right there. Okay, Cassie, let's go to shear rate on that. And there it is, it's right there. Okay, let's go to max rot and see what maximum, right there. Okay, so we do have an area of spin. Let's go to Val Caster, and uh, Val's looking right back at it here. Get a quick shot from Val. And uh, Val, I can see your shot up there. A little bit of a lowering now developing off to your west. And uh, give me an update on that, go ahead. Well, David, uh, we've got a little bit of inflow right here where I'm at. I, I have a feeling that the outflow is not far to my north, though, right here. But we're watching that. A little bit of a lowering, as you said. Um, nothing real serious at the moment. But uh, you know how fast that other one popped up. Uh, okay, David. Okay, I, the north wind is just now hitting us. Wow. I'm about to pull off and get a wind measurement here. Uh, we're getting north winds now. I'm, I'm seeing debris blow across the road, you know, small trash and stuff like that. I'm going to pull off the road here. We're going to check the anemometer and see what we got here, David. Okay, all right. It, and again, it, it might be on and east of Moore. Okay, great job, Val. Let's go to Hank. Hank has power flashes now. 
damaging wind event now unfolding coming in Oklahoma City. We've been tracking it here the last couple of hours. Damaging wind event now. Winds 50 to 60. Go ahead, Hank. Tell me what your winds are now. David, I'm headed, I'm headed south uh, on Santa Fe here coming up to Memorial. My winds turned and started coming out of the northwest. We saw a power flash to our southeast. So somewhere probably near Kelly, 33rd and Kelly, or, or even a little bit further south in that Memorial and Kelly, we saw a power flash. And you can see right now I'm, I'm pointing due south, and my winds are coming out of the northwest. So we might be having one of these little spin-ups just off to my southeast at the moment, David. Back to you. Yeah, Hank, uh, and when you were talking, that area of circulation spun up on top of you and went barreling past you onto the south. You're exactly right. And uh, Hank's just doing all this from the field by watching the wind, right? That's how good he is, okay? That's what I'm talking about here. That's what we do. Okay, let's get back to it here. Go to Lynx 4. We're going to do a storm track. You folks down the line, uh, Lynx 4, quickly here. Jones, 929. That's downtown Oklahoma City, 933. Uh, Tinker Air Force Base, 946. Moore, 950. What you got, Matt Go Mahler? Alan, Alan's at call in, okay, in. all right. Norman, 1010. Shawnee, 1018. Shawnee, Tecumseh, 1027. Seminole, 1043. Let's go to Alan Brosey now. Again, damaging winds coming into the metro. Winds 50 to 60 miles per hour. I hear across the city. Go ahead, Alan Brosey. You're hot. Go. Okay, David. We're at uh, Baptist Hospital now on Northwest Expressway in Kilpatrick uh, Turnpike or expressway we're uh, headed towards the mall area down here at penn square we've got 50 plus mile per hour winds at times blankets and sheets of rain just completely covering our visibility at times uh there's a lot of traffic out here and it's snarled so you know if uh, people are listening on the radios they just need to pull off and let this thing pass because the winds are intense out here uh we haven't seen any power flashes in the last few minutes but david we're in the core of it right now okay we just had just lost some power on some uh, lighting out here now. Something something got hit. But we are headed to the uh, the Penn Square Mall. We're going to sit up there for just a minute and monitor this. This is the strongest part of the core comes right over us. Back to you, David. Okay, great job, Alan Brosey. Let's go back to Lynx 3. And uh, look at this thing sweeping across the metro. This is our next year live, our million-watt radar. Uh, Jim Gardner is not up. Uh, his chopper is now in the barn. So he's good there. But uh, this thing is ripping now south at about 25 to 30 miles per hour. So what you have on the speed cast, this thing is moving. It's really, Over really moving. Over on the storm track, it's, I've got it at 30 right okay, now. Okay, yeah, good, good, good. Great job, because it's moving. And every now and then we'll get a little bit of a spin. Val's got this area to the north now coming in through Edmond, back across the heart of the city. Let's go to velocity data here. This whole thing is going to, again, everybody in Oklahoma County is going to get it. Now the green, once again, the green's going to the blues. Those are winds accelerating to the south okay so we're talking about damaging winds in here are going to be 50 to 60 miles per hour cassie let's stop the laps let's stop the laps let's move this shot a little bit farther north and zoom in slightly and i want to query some of this data here it just updated okay yeah. let's go ahead and query some of this uh right in here this is going to be river oaks golf course just west of you we got a 49 uh we got a 44 so again that's not 70 or 80 or 90 miles per hour wind where we have widespread wind damage that is not what's happening, but we are getting winds 50 to 60. So we're getting sporadic wind, wind reports. We're getting sporadic wind damage here and there as far as uh, power lines either being bumped or losing power. Surrey Hills is without power now. Uh, we know that we, uh, we've got more power outages coming down the Northwest Expressway that our trackers have experienced in Northwest in Oklahoma City, right? And the sirens are now blowing in War Acres which remember, that is a city by city thing. Um, city managers, civil defense managers will blow the sirens and or for a wind event or a severe storm and or tor tornado warning. It's up to them, right? But there is no tornado warning. There's no tornado warning. I was just looking at base SRV. versus R SRV. Yeah, it looks base a little hot. really high. Yeah, yeah it's, but... it's too hot. Let's go back to, uh, and I think we're getting winds in here stronger than 45 to 50. Yeah. Okay, we're getting, yeah, what do we have here? Yeah, yeah, we got at least 50 coming through, and we're going to have some 60 in here. Okay, uh, it's right here at News 9. We're getting hammered here at News 9. Uh, it's going southbound. It'll be coming into Lake Aluma here in about 10 minutes. Uh, let's go back to Hank and get an update from Hank, and then we'll go back to Val. Let's go ahead and get an update from Hank Brown as he's bringing this thing in from the north. Let's go ahead and uh, take his shock control room and get an update from Hank. And uh, Hank, what's your wind? And uh, Hank, now, okay. yeah, go ahead. Tell me exactly where you are, your location here. So I'm on the Broadway extension. I just got on at 100.
twenty second. You can see it's pretty tough sledding out here if you're driving. These winds were blowing fifty to sixty miles an hour from the west, from west to east. So, uh, you know, when it first hit me, I had north winds, and then all of a sudden it raced across the northwest. And as I go south uh, towards where we were seeing power flashes earlier. Oh, it's kind of a mess. Um, the winds are still blowing from the west to the east right now. So if there is a circulation, it's going to be just to my southeast a bit, probably oh, just maybe right on I-35 or maybe just a little bit east of I-35. So uh, we're going to keep going south and try to punch out of this corridor, get back and see if we can see any uh, features of the base, David. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job, Hank. Stay with it. And uh, let's go back to base here, Cassie. Let's go back to Lynx 3. We'll do base. Velocity, we'll switch radars here. Now, we, the radar is going to be a little bit hot, but this is still a damaging wind event where you see the greens and the blues. Now coming into Chesapeake, Oklahoma City University, downtown Oklahoma City moving in right now. It's a north wind. Uh, we're talking about Choctaw, you're next, coming into Jones. And where you see the blue going to the brighter blue, this is a little scary here. Right at the station, just east of News 9, we're going to have at least 60, if not 70. Go ahead, Cassie, let's zoom on into this front lip here. Go ahead and zoom on into this, and uh, let's query some of this. Let's go to, all right, let's go. Who was that? Let's go to Tom. There we go. Let's go to Tom. Tom Pastrano is right in the middle of the blue, which is going to be wind 60 to 70. Go ahead, Tom Pastrano. Give me an update on your wind right now. Yeah, we have winds at least 60 miles per hour. I did have two power flashes, and the power was, actually, there's another power flash. The power went on and off here at Britain and Penn. There's another power flash. I think the winds are definitely increasing. We have winds at least 60 miles per hour, probably 60 plus right here. Back to you, David. Yeah, okay, there we go. So uh, anyway, who knew, right? Okay, so all right, here we go. We're watching News 9 at 10 o'clock. Uh, we hope you've been watching this here all evening long, tracking these into the metro. Damaging winds now sweeping across Oklahoma City. Let's go back to Lynx 3. Tom is in damaging winds and big area of damaging winds. This thing is really, really expanded, running from Edmond, South Edmond, down I-35, all the way back to downtown Oklahoma City, all the way back to the village of Nichols Hills. Big area of light to dark blue. Winds are gonna be 60 to 70 miles per hour. Damaging wind event, it's going to downtown Oklahoma City. Uh, if you live in a high-rise building in downtown Oklahoma City, maybe having dinner up top somewhere, you've got to get away from those north windows. If you're in downtown Oklahoma City, the high-rise building, a hotel, or whatever, get away from the north windows. This is going to be a north wind coming in, and the winds will be higher than what I'm showing here. Okay? They'll be a little bit higher as you get higher in the sky. Okay. All right. Let's go back to Hank right now, and uh, let's check in with Hank uh, with the wind again blowing in from the north. Hank, go ahead. Go ahead, Hank Brown. Damaging winds now sweeping across the metro. Go ahead, Hank. Close. Multiple power flashes. We are at Wilshire and Broadway Extension. We've been seeing them since Britain. I have really strong winds hitting me in the back, straight out of the north right now. I had them. They were just uh, from the west to east. I, I don't know that this is a straight line wind event. I, I think that we may have some little small QLCS type circulation spinning up. We have saw power flashes off and on for about two miles. That last one, I am right on the bridge at Wilshire. It blew up right next to me. Um, so I, the winds are swirling around. You can see now that my winds are coming back out of the northwest. So I'm not so sure that we don't have little small circulations that are spinning around here, David. Back to you. Yeah, no doubt about it, uh, Hank. You nailed it. We could easily get quick little spin-ups with the velocities that we have surging south. The low-level jet is still with us. It wouldn't take much to get a quick spin-up or a brief week tornado on the front lip of this. Okay, let's go to Val Castor. He's on the eastern sides of the wind field and get a quick update from Val and Amy. And uh, Val, you're headed southbound. Your wind will get dramatically higher as you get a little farther south. Go ahead right now, Val. Well, David, we're getting buffeted. Uh, the wind is from the north-northwest right now. You can see looking at our shot right now, we're getting uh, between 45 and 50. Uh, when I talked to you a little bit earlier, we pulled off the road and we got gust at that point to 45. So right now, uh, between 45 and 50, but you know what? It seems to be getting a little bit stronger the further south we go, David. Hey, yeah, great job there, Val. Keep going south. Winds are increasing. Okay, let's go back to Link 3. Uh, get everybody south. Get everybody south. Here we go. Get ready, Moore. Uh, get ready, Norman. It's right over Chesapeake. Let's stop the laps. We're going to go ahead and query some of this. 
And again, the radar might be a little bit hot, but this is going to be over the zoo. Now we're talking about winds of 80 miles per hour. We talked about this during our earlier newscast. We could see winds as high as 80. Well, we might have that going on right now. Power flashes. Who shots that? Oh, let's go to Hank. Let's go to Hank. Power flashes and Hank shot. Damaging winds now. Midwest City, downtown Oklahoma City. Move away from the north windows, okay? Even if you're on the ground level, especially if you're up high, even if you're in a second to a third floor building, get to the lowest level. These are going to be winds 70 to 80 miles per hour. They will blow out those north windows. If you get winds to 80 plus, that begins to change things. 60 mile an hour, winds will, again, windows will be fine. You get to 80, you start to have problems. Let's go back to Hank and get an update from him. Go ahead, Hank, on the wind. We're looking at power flashes. Go ahead, Hank. So, um, hang on, man. Let me try to get through here. People have got the block or the highway block. Um, I am at uh, 63rd and uh, uh, where am I at? Broadway Extension. I'm coming up. Uh, I'm just west of the station, actually. Uh, coming up at 44 and okay. 235. Uh, sorry, hit a construction barrel. Blew out in front of me. Um, our winds whipped around in front of us as right as we were coming up to 63rd, and we saw multiple power flashes right on top of 63rd. Um, yeah, I see it. Sorry, we're trying to dodge construction barrels here on the highway. But uh, so if you know where I'm coming at, where the, where the construction is, and the winds were blowing out of the north, and all of a sudden they whipped around out of the west, and we had multiple power flashes. They were on my left. And I thought, well, hey, maybe we're in a little spin up and then right in front of us, right on top of the highway, there was multiple power flashes, but it looked like something was blowing into the lines and arcing there. It didn't look like, um, you know, I, I couldn't see a swirl with it. I could just see the lines kind of up and down the line arcing. So, uh, yeah, it's a, a high wind event. I think we have small circulations in this, and you can tell from the camera that uh, it's not exactly the best day to be out for a Sunday drive. But so... This is all headed south as we keep heading south. It's coming right into the city, downtown Oklahoma City. That's back to you. Okay. All right. Great job there, Hank. Stay with it. Power now is out at I-35 in the Kilpatrick. That's going to be uh, basically South Edmond or far north Oklahoma City, up north of the... Some down trees in northwest Oklahoma City. Okay. How, where, where's that? Just northwest Oklahoma City. Okay. Right? Northwest Oklahoma City getting reports of some down trees. Easily can be done with winds like this. Let's go back to Lynx 3. And uh, we've got a wind field of 70 to 80 miles per hour running from Chesapeake to downtown Oklahoma City to Forest Park. Okay, this is plunging south. Midwest City, you've got just a few minutes. Tinker Air Force Base, tie it down. Valley Brook, it's coming into you. It's going to go right down I-35. Let's go ahead and lapse this, Cassie. Let's lapse this high wind event moving across the Oklahoma City area. Okay, uh, there's I-35. Strongest winds, we have two areas, two maximum wind zones in the dark blue one is right over let's go ahead and zoom on in Cass. one is right over i-35 go ahead and zoom in tighter here i want to get the uh, streets all yeah. lined up here for everybody all the phones are going off okay go ahead a little stronger here zoom on in okay right over lake aluma all right this is going to be the national cowboy museums right here right this is going to be 63rd uh northeast 36 okay big wind field here damaging winds right over grand boulevard winds in excess of 80 70 to 80 miles per hour going right down I-35, okay? All right, maybe a little hot, but 70 plus, you can count on it. Let's back out of this just a bit here. Let's go to the west, another wind field right over uh, Delaney Park here. This is gonna be on top Pins, uh, Pins, uh, Penn Square Mall up to Deaconess Hospital, wind filled in here, 60 to 70 to 80 miles per hour. And this little area right here is showing winds to 93 miles per hour at Northwest 50th and May Avenue. Okay, and Hank's got power flashes. Tom is right here. Let's go to Tom Pastrano, and Tom is right here. Tom, uh, radar indicating winds 80 to 90 miles per hour just to your west, about two or three miles, actually about a mile. Tom Pastrano, go ahead. You're hot, you're live. What do you think? Give me an update on the wind. Okay, uh, right here at least 60. I have had a lot of trees down. As you can see in my shot, there's a light that just fell off. Um, there's, there's a lot of damage. Uh, luckily, the power is still on, probably not for long here, but it is at least 60. It was probably stronger just a few minutes ago here at Penn Square Mall. Um, I am seeing power flashes to the west, too. Back to you, David. Okay, great job, Tom. Wow, good job there. Again, uh, we've got a light down. This is pretty close to Penn Square Mall. 
Uh, Tom is at basically Penn Square Mall right here. That's where he is right now with some wind damage there. Okay, tree crazy. Tree limbs down in Crown Heights. Tree limbs down? Tree, tree, little trees and limbs down in Crown Heights. Okay, Crown Heights. Again, wind damage there. Okay, let's go to Alan Brosey. This happened live. We weren't with Alan, but this was being uh, live when it, it happened in his shop, we think. Go ahead, Alan. Uh, that nope. snapped off. That's a uh, power line snapped off. Go ahead. Give me your location. That's right, David. We're at Sheridan and Western at the McDonald's downtown. This went, this, uh, this pole blew right in front of us, caused an arc. There's still some smaller arcs up here. This is a very dangerous situation as the electricity is still alive. There it goes. You can see it flashing again. Uh, this is all over the city, but this one right now happens to be at Sheridan and, and, uh, and Classen. No, we're at Western. We're on Western at the McDonald's, and let's say this pole is down, it's live, so, you know, everybody just stay out of the area, stay, you know, you can see it flashing right now, and we're seeing other flashes, David, so we know we've got wind, an ex exception of 50 to 65 plus miles per hour, and it's just, uh, it's hammering the downtown area right now, David, back to you. Okay, that's not, yeah, there's something wrong with OG&E and their website right now, because we, I know we have a lot more than that. Okay, uh, let's come back to Lynx 3. And look at the wind field here, pushing across. Look at the power. Oh, wow. There you go. All right. Yeah, there we go. So now we're getting arcing going on. We got a lot, a lot. Yeah, it's a mess out here. Okay. Uh, let's go back to Link Street. Talk about the damaging wind event again, sweeping across the city. Tinker Air Force Base, Midwest City. Uh, get ready, uh, Norman. Get ready, East Norman. And more. Get ready, East Moore. Norman, you might not get the brunt of the winds here. It's going to be close. Let's back out of this just a second, Cass. Let's back out of this. And here are the damaging winds right across Oklahoma County. Right? Right across Oklahoma County. Damaging winds uh, with this big glob of where you see the green and the blue sweeping across the city. Uh, more over to Stella, over to Lake Stanley Draper, over to Hera, over to Choctaw. You are going to get hammered. South Oklahoma City. Let's go back to uh, Lynx. I'll tell you what, let's, let's stay with this, Cassie. Let's zoom on in. Let's zoom on in here. And let's bring up some of these blues. Keep going in, keep going in. Tighter, tighter, tighter. And look at these winds down here. Forest Park, you're getting hammered. Uh, let's go back to Val. Val's on I-35 and I-44. Let's get to Valcaster, get an update on the wind where he is. Val, damaging winds, power pole snapped off, trees down, lots of folks in the dark. Give me an update. Okay, David, we are on I-35. You can see our location here. We have consistently had uh, wind between 50 and 60. I mean, it's been very consistent for about the past four miles or so. Uh, and I can tell you this, from Frontier City northward, about three miles solid, no power uh, on both sides of I-35. And that was from uh, south of, just south of Frontier City northward to north of the Kilpatrick. There was the power is completely off up there. Uh, power, we've, seen, we've noticed the power is on down here, uh, but up there in that area, it's off, David. Okay, there we go. So uh, right now we have thousands in the dark right now. Remember, if you're watching this on your phone and it's charged or your computer uh, that's charged, your laptop or whatever, uh, your handheld, you're good. You can watch this. We're not going to go anywhere. Power pole's down at Northwest 50th. Okay, power pole's down now at Northwest 50th. Okay, so the wind event continues. Let's go back to Lynx 3. And folks, this is, this is pretty intense right now. Damaging, damaging winds now running from Dell City back up to Forest Park back up to where Val is, and uh, back, there's Spencer. But the, the most intense wind is along and east of I-35. David, I'm going to look at our live radar real quick because it is showing velocities about the same. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, let's go ahead. 74.6. This is off our next gen live, our million watt radar. This is wind moving away from the radar. Okay, Cassie, let's go ahead and zoom on in. Lots of 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. So we switched radars. Now we've gone to our live. We were going back and forth. Everything is, that's red is moving away from the radar. 77, 78. We're going to have some 80s in here. Okay. Go ahead and zoom on in here, Cass. Let's take a closer look. Let's take a closer look. And I'm going to look at some of these streets as we do. Once again, damaging winds now. Central, southeastern part of Oklahoma County. Uh, okay. Yeah, here we go. Hey, uh, yeah, here, here's the, here's Trosper uh, Park Golf Course. Okay, this is going to be Eastern. This is going to be Bryant. Um, this is going to be Southeast 15th Street. Okay, uh, Wheeler Elementary School is right here. This is I-35 southbound. This is Eastern. Okay, Cassie, let's back out just a second. There's Shields and Walker. Damaging winds still ongoing here. Okay, yeah, go ahead. 
right. of the strongest winds. And then also Tom had a, another power line pole down. Okay. And uh, Alan's getting 60 closer to downtown, still behind that initial big push of 70 to yeah. 75. Yeah, he's up here. Cassie, let's switch radars one more time. This is all great. Let's go back to TLX, though. I want to see this coming in from the northwest. And uh, go back to base on this. Okay, let's go to Hank. And uh, Hank is right in the middle of the wind here. It's from here to his east. And this is going to be along southeast 15th, uh, all the way down to, gosh, Dell City. And then from there, it's going to go all the way down to Oak Ridge Elementary School. Eastern's right here. This is going to be South Bryant. Um, yeah, I mean, this is going to be Reno. Okay, to the north, southeast 29th. Between Reno and southeast 29th, the winds are at their strongest. Let's go to Hank Brown. It's going to be east of I-35. And uh, Hank, the strongest well, winds that wind. are to your east. Go ahead, Hank. Give me an update on the wind. Yeah, David, you can see I'm at 29th and I-35. And look at the wind. Good night. Try to zoom through the rain. Um, we've had power flashes on I-35 from I-40 all the way down to uh, south of 29th Street. Um, and you can see the wind is blowing so hard, it almost looks like blowing snow. It's almost like a whiteout condition. You can see in front of us, that's, that's what it looks like out of the windshield. The camera's not fogged over. That's what it looks like. So we've got a lot of high winds here that are headed south towards the, the 240 area. And you can see it's just ripping across me now. That's probably 50 to 60 mile an hour winds that's coming out of the northwest right now. And it is just ripping across I-35, David, moving towards the Valley Brook area. Back to you. Wow, that is a land hurricane. That is a hurricane. Visibilities are nearly zero. Do not leave your home, okay? Unless it's absolute emergency, do not get out in this. You can hydroplane. This kind of wind will blow a smaller vehicle off the road. You can have all kinds of problem in a big hurry. Hank's truck uh, weighs about as much as a house. I'm not worried about him, right? So don't do it. Okay, let's go to Bobby Payne and bring Bobby back into this. He's a little farther north and west, but uh, Bobby, what are your winds doing right there? Now you're a little bit farther west, but you still have some gusty winds. Go ahead, give me a quick update. Do we have Bobby? Alan's getting hit by debris. Okay. Oh, David, here I am. I'm, I'm on, I'm on. Okay, I'm starting to get really strong winds now, 55, 60 mile per hour winds with power flashes now just my north. And uh, I'm just east of Eastern on I-240 headed east. Back to you, David. Great job. So there you go. He's a little further west now and northwest. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 3. Let's go back to Lynx 3 and show you where the damaging winds are. Anything you see that is blue and going to the dark blue are damaging winds running all the way back to where Tom is um, over at near uh, Penn Square Mall. And then the strongest winds are running from the zoo to Forest Park, slamming now into Midwest City, Tinker Air Force Base. Everything sliding southeast at a good 30 miles per hour. And the damaging winds, it just continues. It just, it just continues to pound along and west and east of I-35. And folks, it's going to east uh, more. Going to more, going to east more. Now slamming Tinker Air Force Base. Allen has 70 down let's, by the boathouse. All right, let's go to Allen. Now, remember, Allen's back here at the boathouse, and he's got winds 60 to 70 going on there. Allen Brosey, go ahead. Give me an update. 607. Walker, right now we had a major transformer blow. Uh, parts of downtown is out. We got 70 mile per hour winds right now, David. Our visibility is down to just feet. We can't see. We got hit by debris. We're still getting hit by uh, a bit hit by debris and lodged under our tires. So uh, I'm going to have to check this for damage in just a minute. But uh, yeah, it's really rocking downtown, David. The uh, the power flashes and the wind, and the rain. It's uh, um, there. We go. We lost lost more power downtown. 70, 70 plus right now, David. 70 plus mile per hour. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job there, Alan. And also, Alan Brosey, I know you know this. This storm is beginning to slow down some. We might start to get into a flash flooding mode if this thing does not keep accelerating. And to me, it looks like it's slowing down. We've got new convection redeveloping up into Kingfisher County. That's going to be a problem. And uh, again, here we go. All right. A tremendous amount of heat and instability today across the state and that includes obviously right here in Oklahoma City. So these storms are going to use up every ounce of that. That's why this is not going to go away anytime soon. Let's go to Lynx 4 and then we'll do rainfall totals. Uh, look at the blob of rain right over the city. Unless it starts to end and starts to move, we're going to have flooding developing again here in Oklahoma County. Okay? We're going to have some flooding developing here in Oklahoma County. Doing a storm track. We're looking at uh, more at 951. Norman, 1014, listen up, Norman, Pink, 1023, Shawnee, 1029, 
Juanette, 11.10, Paul's Valley, 11.49, Ada, uh, midnight, and Winniewood at about 12.07. This is a big glob of only game in town is right across central Oklahoma. Eastern Canadian County, Oklahoma County, damaging winds, 60, 70, 80 miles per hour. We had wind gusts to officially at Sundance Airport to 87 miles per hour. That'll blow off part of your roof, that'll bring down all your trees, and that'll blow out your windows. Okay, not a whole lot of hail, which is a good thing. Not a whole lot of hail, but a ton of wind. All right, the hail sizes have come way down compared to what they were several hours ago. There's not a tornado threat with this right now. That's not showing up. We had that earlier. That's gone. This is primarily a damaging wind and a flooding event. If the rain does not move out, the flooding will begin to ramp up. Okay, what about rainfall totals? We've got that on Lynx 1. Lynx 1 control room. And uh, once again, We've already had two to three inches of rain in Kingfisher and Logan County. And here in Oklahoma City, we're now up to one to two inches of rain. All right, that's across all, nearly all of Oklahoma City. And we're gonna, it's going to get a lot higher. Okay, so we're talking three to four to five to six inches of rain. Kelly? One and three quarters. One and three quarter at your house. Okay. Near Turnpike and Memorial. Yeah. Yeah. Turn, yeah. So you're, I mean, and we, right here, and so you're up here. So yeah, you yeah, I've already got nearly two inches at Kelly's house. So two to three, we've already had that. We're going to pick up another two to three to maybe four after that. So flooding, yes, will be a problem. Okay, let's go back to velocity data here. This wind will not let up. Let's go to Link 3 control room. Link 3, and I'll tell you what, this wind will not let up. As it's plunging south, coming into Midwest City, Dell City, Spencer, uh, over to Tinker Air Force Base. Uh, Lake Stanley Draper, it's knocking in on your door. It continues to push to the south. This is the gust front. Cassie, let's back out of this just a bit, kind of give you the big view. There is still damaging winds going on over north and east Oklahoma County, over near Jones. Cassie, back out just a tick more here. Luther, and uh, this is going to be damaging winds here, sliding down towards Fowler and McLeod. But the heart of the damaging winds, it's been a long time since we've seen an event just nearly sit stationary. These winds are not moving much. Let's go back to Valcaster in the heart of the city here, get an update from Val. And uh, Val, wow. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Look at the wind there, Val. Visibility, it's a hurricane. What are your winds right now? Uh, 58, David, 58. We're getting 58 gusts on the anemometer right now. And it's from the north, and we are on I-40, right where I-40 goes south into I-35. And uh, visibility is so poor out here cars are swerving all over the road and david another thing too that i don't think i've heard anybody mention yet uh we've ran into a couple spots with about eight inches of water on i-35 so uh that might be a concern david okay all right great job val stay with it here the, hey val listen up here i tell you what this is it's been a while now the, your your wind event is still sliding south and east but it's still so intense even behind the main line which is, which is, it doesn't happen all the time like that. Usually you get a big gust of wind and it kind of, it ramps up and then as the storm moves away from you, um, but the storm is not moving away from us so much that it's just sitting on top of us and we're getting this relentless pounding of winds 60 to 70 uh, miles per hour. So what are the rain rates? Right now between about six and a half to as much as seven and a half inches an hour. Okay, so there we go. So if this sits on top of us for more than an hour, rain rates are anywhere from five to seven inches of rain per hour. So that's what I'm talking about. That's what I was saying. Some areas could see five to six to seven inches of rain. That will give us flooding if it does not start to subside. Go ahead, Jen. She's in my ear. Go ahead. Okay. I'm being told there's a concert at Chesapeake Arena. Everybody needs to stay inside for now. Uh, let this thing figure out what it's going to do. And right now, it's not moving. It's, it's sliding southeast, but it keeps raining over the same areas. And we're getting reports of now power outages in the downtown area. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 3 and look at the wind field here. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Hank is getting strong winds that he's actually seen some sign damage okay. in the uh, north side of Moore. Okay, he's, he's in Moore. So it's moving to the south there. Yeah, it's, it's going to Moore. It's going to Heyday. It's going to make its way down towards Norman. All right, it's going to make its way eventually down towards Norman. The strongest winds are still a little bit farther north in the Moore area and up in towards Tinker Air Force Base and Choctaw, but the whole wind area here is producing damaging winds. Let's go to Hank down in Moore and get an update from him. And uh, Hank, what do you think? Winds down there, guesstimate right now, looking at 60, 70, what do you think?
Yeah, David, these are the strongest winds I've been in tonight. Uh, we jumped out of the Rancor and got a little bit south. Next to that McDonald's sign was a, was a KFC sign, and the wind blew it out right in front of us. And, you know, sparks and all that good stuff. But there, we are seeing power flashes all back to the north. So we saw them at, right there, right there, see it? So there's lines arcing right here at 12th Street and I-35. See the sparks flying? That's 12th Street and I-35 looking north. So okay. that's the that's the wind blowing. The lines are touching. It's not. It, I don't see any debris hitting those. I just. It looks like those lines are actually touching. We saw power flashes from Crossroads Mall. Uh, we saw them at like 27th and Shields, and now I'm sitting at 12th and I-35, and we keep seeing power flashes, sign damage, uh, the power lines, obviously. Uh, Moore's taking a bunch of power bumps with all these lines that are touching each other. So, yeah, and just like what you said, this is headed straight south to Hayday and, and, and Norman eventually. But these are the strongest winds we've seen on that leading edge in that 60 to 70 range. And there goes the North Park. Yeah. yeah. Back yeah. to you. Okay, great job, Hank. And also notice, Hank, there's not a whole lot of rain in your shot yet. The wind has accelerated the rain. So you're going to get the wind first, and you're going to get damaging winds first. And then you get hammered with the rain, right? It's not like the rain and the wind are together. They're separate. The wind yeah, is ahead well, of the rain. Go ahead. When we were up in Edmond, the wind was in the rain. And as we made our way south through the metro, uh, we came across uh, I-40 on the Broadway extension. And the, the wind and rain were blowing so hard hitting the bridge that it was curling over. It almost looked like waves crashing on a seawall. And, uh, and it was only, you couldn't even hardly see. And that was about the same time that Alan was getting debris hitting him. As we jumped out in front of it, you can see I'm out of the rain. I'm kind of on the back side of that rain core. And that's where I got the biggest wind. So, yeah, it's kind of a dynamic situation out here for sure. Great job. No doubt about it. And uh, uh, look at the, look at there. And boom, there you go. The lines are just banging together. And when they do, you get, yeah, you get sparks, Okay. That's going on down in the north sides of Moore, okay? They've not had the rain yet. They're getting a little bit of rain in Moore. This is the wind out ahead of the rain. Damaging winds, Moore, Norman, Cleveland County, talking about over to New Walla, Hera. Let's go you back. Know, we to might have a downburst. Okay. We might have a downburst going on. Um, I've, I've got a feature to my north uh, in front of me. Turn that camera that, that way. Right there. Yep. Over, the, over that windy sign, there's a big bowl. It, it, that might be a rain foot. Uh, we might be getting a downburst okay. that's coming off of that core that's just to my east because we just got hit with a couple of gusts that are probably upwards of 70 miles an hour. As you can see, it's still making fireworks with these power lines, David. Yeah, no doubt about it. Okay. All right. Well, let's keep uh, headed south and east. Great job, Hank. And Hank, also... Uh, flash flood warning now for Oklahoma County, so we're going to have some flooding to deal with uh, for sure. This storm will not let up. Okay, let's go back to Link 3. Uh, here's reflectivity. Here's where the rain is. This is where the heavy rain is, raining at nearly 5 to 7 inches per hour, running from El Reno to Piedmont. And my problem, our problem, your problem, is that it, this thing is not only shoving south, but it keeps redeveloping here on the northwestern quadrant. Let's back out of this just a little bit, Cassie, here. Talk about the rain that keeps developing in Kingfisher and Logan County. That's exactly what we don't want to see. The cold front's coming in. This rain train continues, and it's got to go through the city before it ends. So flooding will be a problem. Flash flood warning now for Oklahoma County, for Oklahoma City. Do not get out. And listen, it's an emergency, and you have to go somewhere. Stay home. Be smart. Don't lose your life over it. It's not worth it. And if you have to get out and you come across water on the road, don't be that guy. We don't want to see you on TV, okay? Turn around. Don't drown. All right, let's not do this tonight, okay? Stay home. Be smart. Okay, there it is. Big lob of storms. Canadian County, they are severe. Damaging winds. Hail sizes, not a problem. Some small hail. The threats are, like we said, two threats. Damaging wind and flooding. Hail size, there's going to be some nickel and dime size hail. There might be a quarter in there every now and then, but the hail is not the problem. The problem is going to be flooding and damaging winds moving across the metro. Now coming into more, I want to point out the gust front is right here. See this little green line right there? That green line, that's the leading edge of winds going to 50 to 60 miles per hour. And look at the rain over Oklahoma County. I mean, it is coming down. It is coming down. Boy, it's loud here at News 9. We're getting rocked. We're getting rocked. Okay, let's go back to velocity data. And then we'll check back in with our trackers. 
Uh, once again, damaging winds spilling to the southeast. Cassie, let's go ahead and zoom on in. And I want to point out this red arcing line down here. That's the leading edge of the damaging winds coming into Norman, blowing through Norman Lake Thunderbird. Uh, if you're camping at the lake, you got to you got to find a place to take shelter. Okay, winds are going to be 60 to 70 miles per hour. We still have a wind field of higher winds there. Let's go to Bobby Payne and get an update from Bobby. Uh, he is on uh, I-240 now. Let's go ahead and uh, Bobby, what do you think? What are your winds right there? Southeast Oklahoma City down near Tinker Air Force Base. Go ahead, Bobby. Okay, David, I'm getting right now consistent uh, sustained winds, 50 to 55 mile per hour, mile, miles per hour with higher gusts of 60 plus. Uh, right now, the hor I got horizontal blown rain and visibility is about an um, eighth of a mile just to my uh, down the road here. So very strong wind event here happening uh, just on uh, the east side of the metro in the Tinker Air Force Base area. Back to you, David. All right, great job, Bobby. Stay with it here. Again, uh, big, big wind moving through the city. Winds 60, 70, 80 miles per hour. Let's go back to Valcaster. And uh, Val's a little farther north. Let me see where Val is. Uh, he is at I-40 and I-35, it looks like. And uh, Val, strongest winds are going to be on and south and east of you right now. Go ahead. Give me an update on your wind there. David, uh, we have consistently been getting 70 mile per hour wind gusts, uh, and that was in the downtown area. It was at the I-40, uh, I-35 interchange right there, and now we're going east on I-40. Uh, about two or three minutes ago, we saw two or three pretty large power flashes, and that was in the interchange area right there at the junction, uh, and, and traffic has stopped there. It's a major mess on the interstate with uh, all the traffic and the trucks getting pushed all over the place. Um, and, and, you know, it, this wind is just not quitting. It, it just keeps coming. We're, we're seeing power flashes. We're seeing gusts to 70. And see, the power just now went off here. You see my shot go dark. The power just now went off. Yeah, uh, Val, and, yeah, wow, that just went dark. Wow, it sure did. Yeah, we have a lot of people in the dark right now. Uh, og and &E's website's not updating. It's been stuck at 3,000 without power for a while now. We know we have a lot more than that. That was even before the storm got here. And you've been watching it live on News 9. Power going off mile after mile. Power pulls down. Take Allen down. shot. Let's go to Allen Brosey and get an update on Allen. Tie it down. It's moving in from the north. There you go, Allen. Branches. Nope. Some trees probably down. We've been rep again, dealing with reports of that. Go ahead, Allen. Tell us exactly where you are. Okay, David, we're at Southeast 44th and Durlin. We came down 44th from Shield to notice that for at least a couple of square miles, 44th Street is dark. Neighborhoods on north and south side of 44th Street are completely powerless. Uh, we've got down trees. We've got trash cans blown everywhere. We've got we've been hit by debris. We had 70 mile per hour winds coming from downtown to here, so it's uh, it's sweeping through. We're going to go ahead and search for more damage, David, at this. Uh, as this wind sweeps through the city. Back to you. All right, great job, Alan Brosey. You're watching a really a citywide, nearly a metro-wide high wind event moving through the city. We've had winds 60, 70, 80 to just under 90 miles per hour out in Canadian County with this line of storm. So it means business, and the wind's just not letting up. It's just like it blows through the rain, and then we, the winds begin to taper off. They taper off some, but they're still blowing 50 to 60 in behind the line, well behind the line, out into Canadian County. All right, let's go back to Lynx 4 control room, and we're going to do a storm track, bringing it southeast. Now, this is on the leading edge of the rain and all the flooding, right? Going to more, going to Norman slowly. It has slowed down its speed, at least a little bit. Now, the core, uh, you've already got the wind in Norman from the north, but coming into Norman, the rain, uh, the leading edge of the heavy, heavy rain, the lightning and thunder and all that, about... 10:14, Shawnee 10:29, Tecumseh 10:38, Purcell at about 10:54. So again, everybody in Oklahoma County, right? We're getting rain, we're getting severe wind, and we're getting flash flooding now. Getting reports in uh, 36th Street and I-35, flooding there beginning to develop. It looks like so. Some of the usual areas that flood during high rain events, those are beginning to flood first, as they always do. And then we'll start to see some of the air, other areas that don't normally flood uh, begin to flood here if the rain continues. And right now, it is continuing for sure. Okay, let's go back uh, to Lynx 3. And uh, once again, uh, strongest winds now are going to be east of I-35. But I, I want to point out, the, the winds down here, the velocity data is underestimating some of the winds 
coming in from the north. This is a north wind barreling south. Where you see this red line, that's a north wind uh, rushing south. And we're talking about winds 50 to 60 miles per hour along this leading edge. Coming into Noble right now. Slaughterville, you're next. Okay, Blanchard coming in on you right now, barreling through Blanchard. We've got reports still looking at velocity data of more wind. Let's go back out here to Canadian County. Winds out here are still 50 to as high as 60 miles per hour out in Canadian County, all right? In behind the line, well behind the line. Okay, so a, a lot of wind. This whole system is just a big, big wind machine where we've had winds 50 to 60 to 70 to, again, just under 90 miles. That was a measured wind gust to 87 miles per hour at Sundance Airport. That, my friends, is a blowing. Okay, let's go back to Val and get an update from him. Blown down. Go ahead, Val Caster. Go ahead. All right, David, uh, I'm trying to get back where we can get the shot of this thing. We've got a billboard blown down, an entire large billboard. Look at my shot right there. This is, uh, this is uh, in Midwest City. And that thing must have just now happened, too. Uh, in Midwest City, this is on the south side of I-40. Uh, I'm trying to give you a cross street. Let me find a cross street right here. This is just north of 29th Street, and it's on the east side of the road. Look at that. That's a billboard. Those are big steel girders right there, uh, just crumpled. That's, what, that's the kind of winds we got going. I'm sitting right here, David, and what, since I've been sitting here, we've had 56 miles an hour. So, I mean, it's still huffing and puffing. As a matter of fact, there's... I'm looking around, and there's some areas with power outages even here already, David. Okay, Val, what are your winds right there? What are your winds? Uh, right right now, 5-6, David, 5-6. Five, 56. Okay, and uh, he is uh, he's coming in on Midwest City. Okay, so uh, you can see the steel, right, the steel frame of this sign. It's completely bent over and twisted when it bends, right? They're going to they're gonna give, so they twist as they come to the ground, but... Uh, the, these can usually withstand winds 70, 80 miles per hour, but this sign is toppled over, and it's uh, that's a total loss right there. So that that's crazy, crazy wind through the metro. Okay, uh, you guys at the news desk, Kelly and Amanda, again getting reports of there's all kinds of stuff going on here in Oklahoma City. We're going to pitch to them, and they'll pitch back to me coming up. Guys, go ahead and take it. A lot going on, a lot to talk about. Yeah, we just want to get our viewers up to speed on what we know. Oklahoma City Fire Department, they are confirming to us that they are sending out rescuers right now to Lake Overholzer. They have gotten reports that someone may be trapped near the dam area there. As soon as we get more word on that, we'll pass that along. Big concert going on tonight at the Chesapeake Energy Arena. Chris Brown in concert down there and hearing from some of the fans who were there and friends of some of those people. That the power has gone out twice. They have backup generators down there. But Chris Brown has left the stage twice, trying to get the concert going again. But it could be a late night for those folks. And they say they could hear the sirens outside the arena. That's scary. Yeah, that so is scary. So they're staying put there. Lots of power outages. OG&E system watch is not up and running right now, so we can't give you those numbers. Edmund Electric, though, just looking at their numbers, 2,633 current customer outages, and that's just in the Edmund Electric and that's area. That's homes and businesses. You multiply mm -hmm. that by basically two and a half, and so you're looking at 5,000 people who are affected by that right now. That's how OG&E mm -hmm figures that. I want to pass along too. We have our reporters out. We have gotten word of damage. Our Clayton Cummins is up in the Edmond area near Waterloo and Coltrane. He says that an awning has collapsed there at a tire shop, so some damage there. Also getting word of flooding near the Oxford Oaks apartments inside the apartments. Two to three inches of water in some people's apartments right there in the Edmond area. David, we have just seen yeah. so much rain. Yeah, that's second and Brian, David, I can tell you up uh, around where I live, uh, uh, the Kilpatrick Turnpike and Eastern in that area, we've had uh, more than two inches of rain already in, in less than an hour. Yeah, yeah, and rain rates, guys, are five to six inches of rain per hour. Now, it comes and goes, it fluctuates, but yeah, crazy, crazy wind, crazy rain. The flooding is gonna get worse. Flash flood warning for Oklahoma County. Rainfall amounts so far have been one to two inches. I think the radar is underestimating uh, the rain amounts that we've had so far because we have rain gauges that are showing a little more than this. And again, radar is saying one to two to locally three up into Logan County, but uh, we think we've had one to two to locally three across the city. Okay, let's go back uh, to Link Three, talk about the wind. We're getting winds now in the Norman and Noble area where you see the red accelerating. Winds in this green going to this red. See the red pushing south? Winds are going to be 60 to 70 miles per hour. That includes, that's going to include Shawnee 
You folks in Shawnee, get ready. It's knocking on your door. Just blowing through Dale. It's going to hammer Tecumseh. It's going to hammer Shawnee. Uh, Macomb, you're next. Etowah, it's knocking on your door right now. Slaughterville, it's moving into town right now. And then from there, it's coming in on Dibble and Kreiner. And it's going to eventually make its way down towards Chickasha. So the red, everything you see in red that is accelerating to the south are damaging winds. The leading edge of the gust front, it is well ahead of the rain. Okay, so you're thinking, well, the rain's north of us, Payne. Yeah, it is. You're right. But the gust front has accelerated to the south of the rain. It's out ahead of the rain by a good distance here. So let, let's do this. Let's, uh, let me show you where the red is. Now let's go back to reflectivity here. So the rain is still up in more. So we have damaging winds running from Chickasha over to Slaughterville, okay, up to Tecumseh, right? You can see the gust front right here. That blue line, that's the gust front. Look where the rain is. It's way north. You're going to get damaging winds out ahead of it, like in Norman, like right now. Uh, Noble, Slaughterville, Purcell, uh, Macomb, Tecumseh, Shawnee. Just prepare, prepare for damaging winds well out ahead of the line. Okay, well out ahead of the line. Okay, uh, let's go back to the Oklahoma City area here and talk about all the heavy rain, why the flooding will continue. Let's go back into Logan County and to talk about rain still falling. It's not as heavy, but still raining, not good. Running along and south of Highway 33 from Kingfisher to Cashin, down to Deer Creek, over to Edmond, Arcadia. It's sagging south, but it keeps redeveloping over the same area. So the, the wind event will continue along with the rain. Go ahead, Matt. 70 gusts of tinker. Had a 70 mile an hour gust just then? About three minutes ago. Three minutes ago, just had a wind gust of 70 miles per hour at uh, Tinker Air Force Base. Okay, that will get your attention. Let's go back to Val Castor. He's right nearly at Tinker Air Force Base and get an update from Val. Three minutes ago, Val had a wind gust at Tinker Air Force Base. That's exactly where you are. Go ahead, Val Castor. All right, David, look at, look at this shot right here. Look at this shot. Okay, she's going to zoom up. We've got our roof cam on. Look at that shot. The, the underpass has a foot of water under it. Uh, the spray is so bad, we didn't see it until we went through it. But when I went through it, it felt like we were on a roller coaster ride getting stopped really suddenly. Um, there's about a foot of water underneath that. Those cars don't know what's going on right there. Is there any way you can zoom up just a little bit more? There goes a semi through it right there. Oh, it stopped him. Look at that. Somebody coming in behind him. Yeah, that could be dangerous. I mean, we hit it before we even knew it, David. This is, um, um, this is the, uh, I'm going to tell you which, uh, which road this is. This looks like it's the Midwest Boulevard. Actually, it's the, uh, uh, whatever that road is, the Turnbull Drive Road. Uh, that's the underpass right there that goes into Tinker on one of those gates, the Turnbull Gate, I think. But uh, there's a, I would say there's probably close to a foot of water right there. You can't see it until you're right on it because it's raining and blowing so hard. Um, so we're just hoping that uh, no one gets uh, hurt in that. Okay. All right, Val. So he's at uh, basically right in front of Tinker, Tinker Air Force Base. Uh, he's looking back to his west. He's got a north wind howling to the south. And the problem is that we have this water that is accumulating down here, and people are doing 60 to 70 miles an hour. Now watch. They hit this water, and what's going to happen is they begin to hydroplane, or at least slow down. And uh, this guy is trying to come in on this guy too fast. So we'll see what happens with that. We hope nothing bad happens, but uh, again, this is just part of the problem with being out at night during a severe storm. And it looks like they might have had problems here. And they washed out. Over there. Take a look at that. And uh, flooding going on at Penn and Memorial. And I tell you what, let's see, uh, what tracker do we have close by, Justin? I think they're all south. Oh, what's that? Okay, we'll get Tom back up on that. I want to see what that looks like, because that's going to keep flooding. The rain might have dropped off a little bit, but uh, still heavy rain here, okay? Heavy, heavy rain across the city, torrential rain. So damaging winds. Uh, okay, still wind moving across the metro, 40 to 50 to 60. Damaging winds are trying to shift a little farther south. Let's go back out to um, Alan Brosey. Let's get an update from Alan. And... Uh, I've lost where Alan's GPS is. I'm looking at it right He's now. Southeast 29th and Bryant. Okay, Southeast 29th and Bryant. Go ahead, Alan. What are your winds right there? Give me an update. Okay, David, we still got 30, 35 mile per hour wind sustained, sometimes higher gusts. Uh, we're having a lot of ponding in the, in the roadways of water. 
Uh, some areas might have four or five inches. We've got lots of debris in the uh, roadways, a lot of leaf litter and trash that's blown around from these high winds. Uh, parts of 29th and parts of 44th southeast uh, sides of Oklahoma City uh, have no power, no uh, stoplights are out. So people are running through the stoplights. It's become a very dangerous situation. We almost witnessed a, a pretty good wreck. And uh, thank goodness one of the, the drivers realized that the other guy was running it, and he pulled over and hit the curb to avoid the other traffic. So it's uh, just be careful if you've got to be out. About half the lights out here are completely out uh, as far as signal lights go. Um, you know, law enforcement has got their hands full. og has got their hands full. For just, just slow down if you have to be out here, David. Just slow down. Water is rising. Back to you. Okay, great job, Alan Brosey. He's been all over the place today, north, south, east, west, doing what he does. And uh, you see the debris there in the road. Uh, lots of heavy rain. Winds are still gusting 40 to 50 to 60 to 70 the farther south you go uh, here in Oklahoma City. Okay, so uh, here's the deal. The rain continues. Flash flood warning now. Let's go to Lynx 3 and uh, show you what I'm talking about. Heavy rain where Allen is, obviously. Let's back out of this and look at the warnings we have going on. We have a severe thunderstorm warning running from Jones to Oklahoma City downtown all the way down to Slaughterville for winds 60 to 70 to a times approaching 80 miles per hour. Now the winds up in northern Oklahoma County have come way down, but the rain has not let up. So flash flood warning now for eastern Canadian County, southeastern Cass, let's jump up here just a bit, southeastern Kingfisher County, from Kingfisher over to Cashin, over to Seward, over to Oak Tree, Edmond, again over to Luther. These are going to be a big, the, the big box here that's, again, we're looking at the big box here that is flashing green. That's going to be a flash flood warning in effect for the next several hours, all right, at least the next three or four hours. But our problem is that we keep getting this convection. We have a low-level jet kicked in that happens, and it's feeding these storms, okay, running from west of Dover to east of Hennessy. So this line just keeps redeveloping from the northwest to the southeast, so that's why we have the flooding going on there. Okay, let's go back to flooded roadways. Let's go back to Val Castor and get an update from him and uh, talk about what's going on. Let's get an update. And uh, Val, the water continues to rise. Uh, you are right across the street from Tinker Air Force Base, and the wind continues to blow. Give me an update on your wind speed right there, Val, at Tinker Air Force Base on I-40. Okay, David, when we first pulled up, we were getting winds gusting over 50 right here. Uh, and it was even stronger than that. It was 70 a little bit further to the west, but now the wind has calmed down some. We're probably in the 30-mile-an-hour range at the moment, uh, 30 to 35, maybe 40 here. So, I mean, it's still blowing hard. Uh, the rain's still coming down, but nothing like it was before. Uh, the problem that we have right here, you're seeing it uh, right there under that bridge, and this is on I-40 right near Tinker Air Force Base, and I believe that's the Turnbull Drive overpass. Uh, on I-40 right there, there's about, I'm going to say, close to 12 inches of water uh, that is accumulated on the roadway right there. And the problem is, is when it's raining and blowing like this, you can't really see it until you're on it. And see, that happened to us. It was raining harder a while ago. We came through, and we hit it, you know, and I, I'm in a pretty good-sized truck, and so it didn't affect us too much. But I'll tell you what, it felt like we were on a roller coaster and hit a sudden stop. That's how quickly we slowed down. Now, just a, just a second ago before you came on, there was a semi that went through this and slid sideways and almost hit the bridge abutment, uh, and there was a car right next to him when it did. So there's a potential problem right there. We've tried to call 911 but, um, and, and let them know about this also, but it probably needs to be closed at this point, David. Yeah, it's just going to get higher, and the rain's not going to let up, uh, Val, especially in that part of the county. This is way down south. This is at Tinker Air Force Base. And uh, this is what's going on on I-40. Look at the wind there. Wind's still blowing. 40 to 50 in Yukon, too. Yeah, 40 to 50 in Yukon. Yeah, I was just about to confirm that also in Mustang at my house, nickel size hail and 50 mile per hour winds. So, okay. uh, outlet shops down towards Mustang. The storm has intensified right there with extremely heavy rains. Yeah. And well, that's just north nickel of Nickel size hail, yeah. Yeah, your house is going to get hammered. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you might get trashed. Okay. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's come back to Lynx 3 and take a look at it here. Great shot there. And uh, once again, uh, here's Mustang. He's talking about the core beginning to ramp up. This is going to be on and west of Lillard Park, back to and just north of Mustang. The core is getting stronger. Rain rates are getting higher. And this is going to be some nickel and dime size hail 
with that severe storm now, Southwest Metro running from the old Xerox plant down to Will Rogers. Hail here increasing. Let's go ahead and take a look now at, uh, let's do the barren button here. I want to see, okay, yeah, there it is. It's ramping up. Okay, that's going to be uh, nickel and dime size hail. There might even be a little bit larger than dime size or just under quarter size hail out of Canadian County into Oklahoma County, just west of Will Rogers. Okay, might have some pretty good hail uh, right here. And this is going to be, again, moving down towards Newcastle, headed down towards Newcastle uh, from the northwest. Okay, another little hail core going on over in Choctaw, down to and uh, just to the uh, east of Tinker Air Force Base, uh, north of uh, Lake Stanley Draper there. So a lot going on, a lot going on. Okay, let's go back to reflectivity on this. And uh, we'll check in with the trackers again, find out what's going on with the winds. And uh, you can see the storm. Uh, folks, it's, it's nearly stationary. It's moving south at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Honestly, it's moving very, very slow. And that's why we continue with that flooding threat across the metro, down into Moore now, uh, down into Hayday. If you live in a flood-prone area um, and your house can flood or has flooded in the past, and you live in Oklahoma County or down into Cleveland County or McLean County or Eastern Canadian County, and you live in a flood-prone area, you need to be thinking about, hang on a second, what am I going to do if the waters begin to rise and I cannot get out of my home, okay? That's the kind of rain we have right now. Look at it. Taking you back here the last uh, half hour or so. It's barely moving at all. It's crawling to the south. Go and ahead. That, that video Hank has right now, that is damage in Moore. Okay, let's go back to Hank. Hank's down in Moore. It's just, it just started raining in Moore just a little bit ago. Let's go back to uh, Hank. And uh, Hank, give me an update. What do you think? What do you have? Yeah, David, it's kind of hard to see. What, what's happened is a tree broke. This is uh, South Dallas Avenue. It's about 4th Street, just west of uh, uh, Telephone Road. And there's a power line in the tree there. That tree broke, and, and it was sparking. Um, looks like they kind of got that taken care of. The, the fire department's pulling away now. So um, it's still sparking some. You can see it in there in that tree, that little light. Oh, back that out a little bit. That's probably too dark. Um, you can see, but anyway, it's a power line in a tree. A tree fell on it uh, with these winds that came ripping through here. We saw uh, over just south of the skating rink in Moore, there was a uh, power pole that broke, and the power line was across the road. The fire department had blocked that off till uh, the utility crews can get out here. So, yeah, it's a pretty tough night for first responders and utility people, for sure, David. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job. Lots of wind. We all know that. And, uh, gosh, see, we've had... Winds uh, nearly just under 90 miles per hour. That was a little bit earlier. I haven't had that in a while, but we're still talking about winds uh, 50 to 60 across the metro at times with gusts to 70 and a little bit stronger uh, in the south metro down into south of Oklahoma City. Okay, those winds are cranking up. Guys, the wind's still blowing. We're still getting reports of power outages. I know you guys have a lot more at the news desk. Guys, go ahead. Even though og &E's system watch is down, they have alerted us that they have more than 7,000 customers in the og &E, um, system that are without power right now, most of those being in the Guthrie area, also north and west Oklahoma City area. And unfortunately, they don't have a time when they say everything will be up and back running because of all the lightning out there. They want to make sure their, their crews stay safe. Looking at the fire department response page, they are uh, on fires caused by lightning and power lines down all over the metro. I mean, mainly, though, this strip down through the central part of Oklahoma City from north to south. They've got power lines down. Also, want to let you know there's a wreck on I-35, an accident with injury here in about the last 15 minutes. And it could be, be I'm sure it's because of the weather. It was raining so hard. That's at I-35 and northeast 10th Street in the southbound lanes. And uh, had one of my, our viewers, Colita Roush, try to get this picture up here in just a few minutes of a tree on a house at Southwest 23rd in Hudson. There are lots, and it's not a huge tree, but it's a tree. And uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, damage that people are surprised by in the morning light. We are hearing a lot of damage, a lot of tree damage. Talking about where Hank and Patty Brown was, Mary Salazar, another one of our News 9 viewers, telling us in the Moore area, 104th and Santa Fe, trees down in that area as well. And Kelly, you were talking about the, the fires and how the firefighters are going out on these calls. One area that they're responding to is around Northwest 150th and Council. They have a report of lightning causing a fire in that area as well. 
I want to tell you too because we, we told everybody earlier on that the fire department's going out to Lake Overhaul, sir, because of a report of somebody possibly trapped. We have not gotten any new word. We do have the, our crew on the way as well. Clayton Cummins is on his way out there. I just wanted to let you know that as soon as we hear anything about that, um, good or not good, we'll, we'll pass that along. Okay. We'll toss it back over to Cassie now. Cassie, the reports keep coming in and uh, as the storm kind of passes through areas, I think we're going to hear more and more. Probably. The good news is these storms are slowly detensifying. So they were pretty strong earlier. Lots of wind, uh, lots of damaging wind gusts, even over 70 miles an hour at times. The good news is this is becoming less of a wind threat and more of a flash flooding event now. So we've got flash flood warnings all across the metro. Here we are on Link 3. You can see we've just got a wall of rain and it's just continuing to go over some of the same places. So that's going to be the concern now mainly is just all the rain that we're just going to continue to get lightning strikes they've actually come down a little bit it's still loud we still have a lot of lightning in fact just here in the past 15 minutes we've had over 200 but we noticed that that is coming down a little bit we were also talking about the potential for any hail earlier a lot of people obviously concerned about their cars and stuff that's outside well earlier we were getting reports of hail around the Yukon area and I was looking at um, a report that just came in at 1018 so less than 10 minutes ago and that was six miles southeast of Yukon and we were getting half dollars size hail there. So I'm going to look at the barren button and see what we're doing as far as hail is concerned right now. And it was saying maybe up to a quarter size hail, maybe a little bit larger at times, just south and east of Yukon, exactly where we got that report, obviously. And we still have that uh, still just south and east of Yukon, just north of Mustang. And it looks like it should be staying south of Oklahoma City metro area but it's just going to continue to track off to the south and east. And like David was mentioning earlier, these storms are slowing down. That's not necessarily a good thing because we're still talking about all the flooding rains and we're just going to continue to see a lot of flooding, especially around the metro, right over the heart of Oklahoma County. And you can see that flash flood warning has been extended into now Cleveland, McLean County and into Grady County as well, David. Yeah, it just keeps oozing south. Now the wind, like Cassie was saying, has outrun the rain. OK, we, you got you get a wall of wind at 60 to 70. All right, that's down here, and then you get a wall of water in behind it that's just going to move in like a bad relative and hang out for about four or five hours. So uh, that's not good. Again, the rain continues to fall at four to five inches per hour. Okay, so that's why we have flooding developing in and around the metro. And this whole thing, see how it's starting to do it like a, it's starting to kind of concave in the middle. It's a little ball of energy here, and it's just sagging and sinking south. Go ahead. 60 gusts just now in Shawnee. Shawnee just had a wind gust of 60. Out of the northwest. So the rain isn't even in Shawnee yet. How about that? Like we were saying, the wind is down here. See that green line? This blue green line? That's the leading edge of the damaging winds now. 50 in Norman. 50 in Norman. Thank you, Matt Mahler. Going into Purcell, Wayne, Payne, Dibble, Kreiner, Chickasha, over to Amber. That's the leading edge of winds 50 to 60, gusts to 70. Let's go to velocity data and look at the rain across the metro. It just won't let up. Uh, and 50 in Minko. What is that? 50 in Minko. 50 in Minko. Okay, that's right back in here. So let's go ahead and query some of this cast and see what we have on some of the data. Uh, the radar uh, is, again, having to shoot through a lot, a lot of rain, right? So uh, we got to keep that in mind. It, the radar beam is strong, but when you've got water running, you know, three counties wide, you're going to have problems for sure. Okay, so um, heavy, heavy rain continues. Winds are going to be 50 to 60 miles per hour in the red. And let's, I tell you what, let's just drop a little farther south here. Talk about our friends down in southern Oklahoma. And then we'll do a storm track on it. Um, just drop just a little, okay, see this, this red line, okay? Damaging winds along this red line. All right, St. Louis, you're next. Uh, Juanette, get ready. Uh, Paola, it's coming. Wayne Payne, here it comes. Over to Ellick, over to Ninnikaw. Uh, now blasting through Chickasha. Winds are going to be 50 to 60 along this red line. But remember, the rain is still back to the north. So 50 to 60, you might have a couple of gusts close to 70 with this line as it marches uh, onto the south. Okay, as it marches onto the south. Okay, uh, let's go to reflectivity, turn that on. Now look where the rain is. Look how far the rain is, right? The wind is way down here. Look where the rain is. It's back to the north. It's only now made it to Norman, over to Pink, over to Tecumseh, now coming into Shawnee. Okay, let's go back to the metro. Severe thunderstorm warning continues for the southern half of Oklahoma County, Cleveland, McLean County, winds 60 to 70 miles an hour, Pottawatomie County, Shawnee, get ready. It's going to get loud, and it's going to rain, and it's going to rain a lot, and you're going to have flooding in Shawnee. 
Count on it. Bank on it. You're going to have flooding in Shawnee, so get ready. All you civil defense managers that uh, live and work in these cities down to the south, you're going to have flooding going on down here. It's going to happen for you, okay? All right, so let's go back to the northwest. Look how this rain is just relentless. And this what is what happens when you have a large complex such as this. You start to get these bands that begin to develop. A lot of times this will happen in the morning, okay? You'll get these bands that develop out of the northwest. But uh, this thing is just not letting up. So this is why we're going to have continued flooding tonight and into tomorrow morning if it does not let up more than it's doing right now. But right now, uh, it is game on. Heavy, heavy, heavy rain uh, for sure. Okay, let's go to Tom Pastrano. Tom is back in on some damage here and get an update from Tom. And we'll take his shot. And uh, let's go to Tom. You guys got Tom Punch? Let's go to Tom Pastrano. Go ahead, Tom. Tell me where you are and what's going on there. Yeah, I'm in front of Penn Square Mall, and there are quite a few trees, medium to large trees that are down. There's some in the middle of the road. Uh, they're all over the place. It's of course, out here, just trying to maneuver. Here, um, when the winds were blowing, and they were blowing at least 70, maybe 80 miles per hour. Back to you, David. Hey, nothing on social media? Power lines flashing in Tecumseh. Okay, so uh, that wind, we just, I just showed you that on radar, that wind now hammering uh, Tecumseh. Okay, we'll go back with our trackers here and check in with them coming up. All right, let's go back on radar here. And once again, heavy rain across the metro, pockets of moderate to heavy rain. This one severe storm now right over Will Rogers, back down to Mustang and Newcastle, dropping south, coming into Norman. Blanchard, you're next. This whole thing is dropping off to the south-southeast. And uh, Norman, Lake Thunderbird, it's coming in from the south. Just had a wind gust with power flashes. Uh, winds going over 60 now in Tecumseh, which is right here. Let's go ahead and shift this a little farther east. Talk about OBU, Shawnee, Tecumseh. And look at the spin going on. See this right here at this last couple of frames? A little bit of a spin here. This thing's what we call an MCV. It's turning into a mesoscale convective system. And uh, it's become so large, it's become so big that the pressures in the center of it become low and we start to get an area of low pressure okay we start to get an area of low pressure developing somewhere inside this and usually it's kind of in the center and up to the top two uh, trees down two miles east southeast of norman two big trees down yeah trees down okay multiple trees is what okay point. lots of trees down on the east side of norman two east southeast of norman. oh two southeast of downtown norman that's going to be down here uh, down near Highway 9, basically right in here. So, again, the rain is just now coming into the Norman area. Down to, Not even raining in Noble yet, but you've got strong winds down there. Okay, so the rain is just relentless back in here behind it. Moderate to heavy rain for sure uh, across the metro. Okay, uh, let's go to Val Castor, get an update from Val. He's still at the... Uh, uh, Val, isn't that the Southeast 29th bridge over? I-40 right there. Look, go ahead, give me an update on what you're looking at. Well, uh, David, I'm thinking it's the uh, uh, the uh, Turnbull the Turnbull Drive bridge at the Turnbull Gate, I believe, at uh, Tinker Air Force Base. That's what it is. It's kind of on the east side of Midwest City, and uh, we've been watching. Uh, we've seen a couple of near wrecks uh, right there with people coming really, really fast through that water. But in about the past ten minutes or so, uh, the water has gone down somewhat. The rain is slacked off and the wind is also slacked off here a little bit also so that's good news but uh still there is still some water there but it is going down david yeah okay all right great job val stay with it here it looks like the water has gone down some but the wind there uh is still blowing okay let's go back to links four and do an update on links four and uh, fight again a couple things going on with this storm pushing south not that fast right the gust front is down here actually we could end up doing two Two storm tracks running from Tecumseh down to Purcell. See the green line? That's the leading edge of the damaging winds, 50 to 60 miles per hour. It's now through Prague. It's west of Tecumseh, down to south of Purcell. Now coming in on Lindsay, the green line is the gust front. Now the storm itself is coming into Tuttle at about 1039. We're almost there. Purcell, uh, close to midnight. Lindsay, 130 in the morning. Paul's Valley, about 145. And Ada at about 2 o'clock in the morning, Winniewood, 216. And once again, this thing will keep pushing south. Not that fast. It has slowed down. It has slowed down for sure. 
Okay, let's go back into the metro here, check in with Hank, and get an update from uh, Hank on what he has. And uh, Hank, give me an update on the wind that you have there right now. David, it's not too bad. I'm in more. I'm at 12th Street, 935, and they're probably only about 25 or so. We've been all over more, though, from uh, for the people that live here around Santa Fe Elementary. Uh, quite a few power lines down, a lot of uh, just kind of light to moderate tree damage. Uh, over by Northmore Elementary, there was uh, quite a few uh, uh, power lines that are down or they're in tree limbs, they're arcing. Um, man, the fire department, they are busy. They are running calls right and left. The scanner is just nuts with just so much wind damage. It's kind of widespread across more. But we haven't seen anything that's, you know, real uh, severe damage at the moment. So that's the good thing. It's just uh, mainly a lot of tree limbs and, and power lines that are arcing. David, back to you. Okay. All right. Great job there. Great job. Uh, Hank and Patty, again, uh, they've been in winds well in excess of 70 miles an hour. And Tree limbs down, power poles down. They've been in a mess tonight. Okay, let's go back to reflectivity here on links three and uh, take a look at what's going on with that. And uh, heavy, heavy rain now. Again, Tuttle to Norman, down through Macomb, Shawnee. Again, this is the heaviest core. And then back to the north, it's not as heavy, but uh, still heavy pockets of rain all the way back into Blaine County. So again, everything's sliding to the southeast. So the flooding will continue. Uh, with this across the metro. Flash flood warnings here for the next several hours. The whole storm basically has been lit up inside the yellow box as severe. Winds are going to be 60 to 70 miles per hour. Okay? Guys, let's go to Lynx 3. Lynx 3 control room. And to take a look at, there we go. Look at that heavy, heavy rain. Again, just crawling south. Now coming into more. We're going to have flooding in more Norman. We already have some. We're going to have flooding. We already do in the south metro. Uh, let's go to Tom and get an update from Tom. Pastrano, and it uh, looks like he's found another tree down, at least a branch or something. And uh, let's find out where Tom is. Tom is back into the center part of the city. And uh, Tom, is that a branch or a whole tree? Go ahead. Yeah, it's a whole tree um, that got sheared at the base. Um, probably about a 10, 12 inch diameter tree. Uh, all throughout these neighborhoods, right uh, around Payne Square Mall, I think they took the brunt of the wind. Uh, we're seeing a lot of tree damage. Uh, there was a power pole that was leaning over. Lots of, of street lights are just dangling or just completely off. So there's a lot of damage here. Um, but the power is still on in this neighborhood. So um, I guess that's the, the good point here. So back to you, David. All right, great job. And uh, just keep driving around here. We'll find some more damage and more flooding here for you. Uh, Tom, but a great shot there. Uh, good job. Okay, uh, Tom right there, another tree down. And look at all the trash cans. Of course, those are down. Those are easy in this kind of wind that we had earlier. But the winds have subsided. That's a good thing about it here in Oklahoma City. We're still getting gusts 40 to 50, but a far cry from what we had when this whole thing was pushing through with winds to 60 to 70 uh, miles per hour with gusts to 87 miles per hour uh, at, uh, yeah, Sundance Airport. So that's out in Canadian County. That's out near Piedmont or just uh, west of Bethany. Crazy wind earlier with the main line. The winds are not as strong, not near as strong as what they were. But the rain, the rain continues to fall. It has let up. Here's some good news. The rain has let up in at least the north metro. Okay, it has let up some. Okay, uh, let's go back to Lynx 3 and uh, give you kind of the big view. Another severe storm now. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this, cast. This is going to be northwest of Okarchi. Severe storm here now, northwest of Okarchi, uh, back to and south and east of Omega. And again, that's going to be sliding southeast still at about uh, 15 to 20 miles per hour. It's coming into Okarchi. All right, this storm is severe, and so is this one. Both of these storms are severe. Torrential rain, flooding rains out of that. Matt Mahler, what do you got? Yes, uh, between, uh, council between I-40 and Reno, several cars stalled with flash flooding. Just got the report. Okay, all right, let's get one of our trackers on that. Okay, let's get one of our trackers on that. Okay, Matt, say that again to me. Uh, council Road between I-40 and Reno. Between I-40 and Reno council on Council. Yes. Yeah, uh, cars, cars in the water. Are stalled out underwater, yeah. Cars are stalled out underwater. Alan is right down the road, so he'll, okay. he'll be checking that out. Okay, good. Alan will be there shortly. He's on his way. He'll be there shortly. Okay, let's go back out to Val. And Val's making his way back through, again, uh, the metro here. And uh, Val, the wind has come down. Give me an update on what you're thinking right now. Lots of flooding going on. Okay, David, uh, we're in Midwest City on I-40, and you're right, the wind has come down. 
uh, we're we're starting to see, you know, once the rain is quit and we can see what's going on, we're seeing more damage than I thought there was. Um, this is a, there's a power line down right here, and this is a, a large billboard right there. If Amy will turn the shot, and you keep going or back up. Okay, the light. Okay, uh, a large billboard over here. I'm going to back up so you can see it. Um, it's down right over there. There it is right there. Now, there was a lot of wind that came through here, and this is over by, I think, Rose State College area, and we're starting to see superficial damage all over the place and even bigger damage. Uh, David, just about a half a mile down the road, there was one of those big green highway signs just laying in the middle of I-40, and you could tell that um, people uh, have been running over it. I mean, I had to kind of swerve to miss it. So we're going to look around to see what else we can find over here, David. Okay. All right. There we go. And there, again, we have sporadic uh, wind damage across the metro. About everybody here in Oklahoma City has a branch or two down or a limb down or leaves down uh, for sure. Power pole there, like you said, that snapped off. So, I mean, we just, uh, you know, this thing came barreling through and it had teeth on it. We had the tornado. We think we had a tornado earlier, by the way, uh, just north of Oak Tree. We had power flashes, velocity data supported that. That is now long gone. We don't have a tornado threat right now with any of these storms. That was earlier but we think we at least had a weak, brief tornado on the ground uh, as it was coming out of Logan County into North Oklahoma County uh, several hours ago. But that threat has gone away. But there, power pole. There you go. So, we, yeah, we, uh, wind damage. We've got power outages. A lot going on. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 3. And, uh, again, the rain is getting, here's the good news, a little bit lighter in North Edmond here. That's great. Heaviest rain south, southwest metro, back to Union City. Back down towards Minko, heavy rain, southwest Oklahoma City, Westmore, east of Mustang. This storm is severe right here. That's going to be Westmore, okay? That's going to be dropping south. And then we have pockets of heavy rain right over Pops up to Oak Tree. And then we have the other severe storm running from Okarchi. This storm is severe in Okarchi. It's going to go right over town. Okay, wind's going to be 50 to 60, maybe gust to 70. And then another severe storm just south and east of Omega. And that's going to be sliding southeast, kind of over the same area. Okay, let's jump back into Caddo and Grady County here, Cass, and talk about the one storm we have down here. Uh, I'm sorry, let's come back to the north here, near Kogar, right here. Uh, this storm uh, producing winds uh, 60 to 70 miles per hour in Kogar, okay? That's going to be west of Minko. You folks in Minko, damaging winds coming in from the west, okay? It's gonna, this is going to be a west, more of a west wind to an east wind barreling through Minko. That's going to Tuttle. That's going to make its way down towards Bridge Creek. Remember, the gust front is well south of this line. Okay, the gust front is well south of this line. Let's go to Alan Brosey. And it looks like Alan is some deep, deep water. And uh, Alan Brosey, looks like you found it. Go ahead, give me an exact location. That car stalled out, drove into the water, not going anywhere. Go ahead, give me an update. That's correct, David. We just went through Reno and Meridian, and we're westbound. That area is flooded six to ten inches of rain, and uh, now we're at Ann Arbor in Reno. It's also under six to ten inches. You saw the flooded out car here. We're just uh, we can see the road through the, the clear rainwater, so we're proceeding. Uh, if you can't get to where you can see the road, then you need to turn around. Uh, six to ten inches though is not unusual on Reno on these heavy heavy rains. We're trying to make our way to Council and uh, ascertain the damage there. There's apparently some cars flooded out there too, but Reno from Meridian through Ann Arbor to MacArthur has a lot of deep water. And the, uh, the drainage ditch between the avenue here on Reno is completely full. Uh, it's just right now, it's just uh, it's less than six inches from being over the roadway here. So um, just stay out of the area. If you, if you don't have to get out, just stay completely out of the area, David. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job there, Alan. So uh, once again, a little bit of flooding going on here and there. We have pockets of flooding. We've had some people that have been stranded or call, cars that have stalled out. That has been a given, right? Like what Alan's doing right here, but you go through slow. A lot of folks will go through just simply uh, too fast, and the water gets up in the engine, and then you're stalled, and then your day has suddenly changed, and it's gone from uh, not so bad to really bad, right? Because you're stuck in water, and you're scared, and it's not good. So don't drive into water. Alan is an experienced storm tracker, and this water is not that deep right here, but let's let's... Uh, if you're going to be out and about tonight, let's not do that at all. Okay, so the winds have come down in Oklahoma City. Good news there. Uh, what about rain rates on Lynx 1 control room? Or rain amounts, sorry. Rain amounts. 
uh, there you go, four inches running from Kingfisher uh, down to Four Corners. And remember, all the streams and rivers up here drain into Canadian and Oklahoma County and Logan County, right? All this water flows east and southeast. Okay, the Cimarron River makes a turn, right, and goes up north of Guthrie. But a lot of this water and those streams and tributaries come down into towards Deer Creek and Piedmont. All right, so we're going to have flooding developing. It's already happening, and it will continue, it looks like. Power outages? Yeah. 37,000 now. 37,000. That's more like it. <laughs> 37,000 og and &E customers without power. Wow. I knew it was a lot higher than... What was being reported earlier. And David, also, um, Hank was down in the South Central Moore area, and right. there was more likely a malfunction with one of the sirens that was going off just okay. a couple minutes ago. So, nothing tornadic down there, but. Yeah. So yeah, scary. Probably right. a malfunction. Yeah, a little bit of lightning and thunder, and people start to panic and worry. So, okay, let's. Uh, let, and again, these are rain rates, okay? This is radar estimating how much rain is falling per hour. And uh, these rain rates are five to six to seven inches per hour, where you see the the purple. That, that's, that's pretty amazing stuff. Okay, let's go to links four, and I want to point out where the gust front is, where the winds are behind this green line. This green line is where the winds are gusting from the north at 50 to 60 to nearly 70 miles per hour, okay? Damaging winds along this line, and then you jump back north about 30 miles, and you get back to where the rain is and the flooding is. But here's the good thing about this. The Oklahoma City rain is beginning to subside, but we're still going to have pockets. We're going to have pockets of heavy rain overnight tonight. But the heaviest rain now is from Union City, Southwest Metro, Moore, Norman, Stella, over to Shawnee, okay? This is our main storm. Here's the good news. It is beginning to move, finally. But we have these little bands in here that we're going to have to watch. Now, these aren't too big and bad right now. These will still give us some flooding, but uh, could be a lot worse, right? West of Kingfisher west of Okarchi, right? So we got to keep an eye on those because these bands will produce damaging winds. What you got, Justin? Hey, I'm just going to say, go to Hank. He has another big power line pole leaning over that okay. uh, police have blocked off. All right, there we go. And uh, Hank, tell us your exact location. Is the power out in that area? You think it would be? And, uh, well, that's a, that's a big pole, too. Yeah, David, we are sitting in the uh, Walmart neighborhood market at 4th and Santa Fe and more, and this is just west of that. Uh, the old-timers out here will know this is where it used to be the old Southwestern Bell AT&T substation, and uh, the police actually have 4th Street blocked off just west of Santa Fe, and, then they've, and they are just um, about halfway to Western. They have it all blocked off, so that, yeah, that's a big pole that, that blew down. It's not one of the little power lines. That's a a big one. I don't know if it's, it's broken or leaning or what, but yeah, there's uh, sporadic power outages all over more. We still see lights on around this particular area, so I think the lines are still up, but uh, yeah, that could uh, be a bad situation if that thing fell across the road. Okay. All right. Great job, Hank. And uh, I tell you what, power pull there, yeah, snapped off, and uh, that'll get your attention. Winds, winds were, you know, that's when it was coming through 70 to 80 miles per hour, so that's big time. Uh, that's big time wind. Okay, so 37,000 og and &E customers in the metro without power. It's been a long time since we've had that many folks at the same time in the dark. It's been a long time. Okay, so that's, that's, that's impressive for sure, but not surprising considering how widespread the wind event was when it came to the city, 60, 70, 80. We had a wind gust to 87 miles per hour, uh, 87 mile per hour wind gust. Uh, at Sundance Airport. That was a couple of hours ago when the line was coming through. So just under 90 miles per hour. So that will easily topple power poles and power lines and tree limbs and trees with that kind of wind. Okay, so our storm, again, is sliding south slowly, not that fast, but at least it's moving heavy rain south Oklahoma City. This whole line of storms is severe. The gust front producing damaging winds is still well south of the line. But the Southwest Metro, heavy, heavy rain, and the damaging winds continue there. Let's go back to Alan Brosey, then we'll check in with Val. Let's go to Alan Brosey and get an update from Alan. Looking at his GPS location, he's back in the West Metro, still over there. And Alan, now that looks like all water to me. That looks like all yeah, water. Yeah, David. 
We're on Reno now at Council Road. We can see uh, stranded cars all over the place. We're, uh, we've got about 8 to 10 inches of water here. Um, thank goodness we can see the guardrails and the curbing on one side, and uh, on the other we can see the, the curbing. So we know we're not in any danger, but uh, there's enough water here that low, low-riding low vehicles are definitely flooded out. Okay. Um, all right, David, I see back to the south here. There's emergency vehicles uh, between Reno and I-40, and I'm not sure what they're doing down there. We'll get down there in just a second. I've got to get through here, though, without uh, becoming a hazard myself. Okay. Yep. Uh, lots of high water. Oh, we've got cars and ditches, David. We're going to get you a shot in just a second, but we've got lots of high water here. Reno and Council in uh, some areas are impassable, so please stay out of the area. We've got law enforcement down here trying to handle this, and uh, like I said, we're trying to stay out of the ditches ourselves, so we'll get back with you in just a second, give you a shot. We have vehicles in the ditch. Back to you. Hey, Alan, let me ask you a question. By looking at the water marks that are up on the grass, has the water, has the water dropped? Has it come down by checking the, the debris water mark in the grass? Has it come down the last half hour? The rain rates and the rain is not as heavy as what it was, but even though we still have... David, it, it may have, but look at this vehicle here. It is completely in the ditch. We're going to get out and check and see if there's anybody in there. That vehicle is completely in the ditch. Uh, back it up there. There you go, Earl. Uh, I mean, it's nose down in a, in probably four four feet of water, and it's raging water right now. So uh, let me get back to you. I'm going to get out and see if uh, see if we can see anybody in there, David. Well, yeah, Alan, that ma makes me a little bit worried. If that car went off like that, obviously they drove off into that and didn't realize. You wonder how they were able to, uh, especially open that door. Or roll down that window. I mean, obviously you can, but uh, that's that's pretty scary. Okay, check on them. See what's going on with this car. Hopefully they're not in there. We'll find out here shortly. And uh, there's Alan. There goes Earl. And uh, both Alan and Earl are both retired Oklahoma City police officers. Yeah, they know what they're doing. So they're going to make their way around front. Earl will give us an update and uh, find out what's going on here. And... Uh, We'll get an update from Earl. He'll get back in the car. We'll find out what's going on. They're probably out, right? Alan's That's... talking. We'll turn Alan on. Get it, David. Go, I'm sorry, Alan, start over. Go ahead. We missed that. Go ahead. Yeah, there's nobody in the vehicle. Earl okay. checked, and there's somebody over here about uh, about 30 yards from the roadway. Uh, apparently, they're waiting on a ride. Okay. So uh, they may have been in that vehicle. Go ahead and roll on that, Earl, for just a second. Okay, and we're rolling on you we're back gonna... here. So we got you. Okay, we're go we're going to make our way back to the intersection where there's two or three other vehicles off in the ditch. Wow! Th and, and again, you can you can see, see in my the shot line. there's uh, see the water line? there's there's six to eight inches of water here, and it gets deeper as you get closer to the intersection. Right. And, uh, you know, thank thank goodness we're in a, we're in a high truck, so uh, I know what I can get away with and what we need to steer away from, and we haven't. Uh, we haven't been anything we couldn't steer into and right. out of yet, but uh, it's uh, it's pretty dangerous here. Well, let me. Oh gosh, we got a lot of. There was a high water rescue going on over here because. Okay. All right. We'll get up on it. Look at this truck here. There's another. There's another truck. Okay, this guy's. Point. And look, they're in it. They're in standing in the back of it there, Alan. You yeah. Got people in yeah. the back. We're, I'm going to have Earl pan, real slowly to the uh, right, Earl. And you can see five, six, seven vehicles in the in the ditch, in the water, uh, both close and across uh, on the northbound lanes of Council. Uh, water there is two to four feet deep, depending on where you're at. This this truck that's in front of us, uh, point back to the truck real slowly there, Earl. This truck that's in front of us has driven off into the ditch. Uh, his nose is in four to five feet of water right there. Yeah. And uh, we've got we've got guys in the back of the truck now. Apparently, they're they're getting their goods out of there, and they realize that the the truck's there for the long haul until they can get a wreck right here because he's not getting out of that. No, he is not getting out of that. Okay, Alan. Now, one more time, tell the folks at home exactly. You're at uh, Reno, and what's your North South Street right there? Okay, we are Reno and Council. Okay, Reno Council. Okay, all right. Just to make you sure. can see right here that the vehicle in front of the uh, water burger. Uh, water is two to three feet deep there, and there is not a ditch. That's just high water in the roads. Wow, yeah. There's not a drainage ditch. There is a there is a drainage ditch uh, right in front of us here. Yeah. And that's where these guys are at. That's where that guy's at. Right. Yeah, great job, and, Alan. Uh, yeah. 
Okay. We'll, uh, we'll keep it, you advised, uh, David. Alan, I was looking at the water mark when you were driving, when you made that U-turn back there. The water has dropped in this area, maybe six, eight, ten inches. I don't know. I couldn't tell, but I could see the water mark up on the grass. So it has dropped some, which is a good thing. Alan, is that a high water rescue going on to your right? I mean, look at all yeah, the carnage David, here. There's there, cars everywhere. There's a high water rescue going on right there where you see the emergency lights and then probably... Um, now that's about 150 yards north of I-40, and as I pan back sure. over here There's towards I-40, right you can see another high water rescue because we've got two or three other right. vehicles in the ditch and uh, very, very high water there, David. I, man, right. they've got people checking vehicles, right. got law enforcement out here. It's, uh, it's a mess. It's a total mess out here. Back to you. Hey, Alan, here's the deal. Probably stay there, and here's, here's why. You've got another big wave of rain going to come right over you. As a matter of fact, uh, it is now crossing county line. Another heavy, okay. heavy, heavy, heavy wave of rain, which is going to be coming in. So these waters are going to go back up. They're going to increase where Alan is. All right, Alan, uh, stay, th stay in this area. Don't go anywhere. I think it'll get worse before it gets better because the water is going to rise again with the gotcha. next wave. Let's go to Valcaster. I'm looking at his shot. And uh, wow, look at that mess. There you go. That's not good. And uh, Val, tell us exactly where you are. And uh, wow, that's, you know, wind 70, 80 miles per hour that blew through there earlier. Look at that, right on top of that truck. Go ahead. All right, David, we're, this is Southeast 15th Street right now. And this is probably a quarter of a mile or so west of Douglas. And we've got several power poles down here. And this is on the north side of uh, 15th Street here. Now, I'm talking to the police officer over here, and he tells me this looks a lot worse than it is. Uh, the power poles didn't actually fall on this pickup. Uh, the pickup ran off the road and pretty much got stuck and ran into the power pole right there. Uh, but his his airbags went off, and uh, they got out okay. Everybody's fine. Nobody was hurt here. But uh, he's telling me, the police officer here is telling me that there's power poles down all over Midwest City, David. Yeah. Right there, Val. Wind 70 to 80 miles per hour. So no doubt about it. No doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe more than 80 in some spots. Yeah, no, I agree. We, yeah, we were looking at, at some uh, radar. We're showing up to uh, you know 85, maybe as high as 90 in a few areas for sure. I had an 87 Val at Sundance Airport earlier. Official measurement there. So, yeah, 70, 80, 90 mile per hour winds. Yeah, no doubt about it. Wow, that that is not good. So there's a lot there's a lot going on in Midwest City around Tinker mm -hmm. Air Force Base. Uh, for sure. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 3 and uh, give you the big view on Lynx 3 if we can. And uh, let me show you what the rain looks like and where the severe weather is. Lynx 3, control room. All right, so we have the storms. I know, right? They just keep redeveloping over Blaine County, down through Okarchi, and these are sliding into the metro. This is why we're still going to have flooding overnight tonight. This is why we're going to have flooding into the morning is because the rain is going to continue. We're going to call it the rain train, especially in the west and southwestern sides of Oklahoma City. Heavy rain down in Nor Norman and Moore, back to Tuttle. These storms are all severe down here. Winds are going to be still 60 to 70 miles per hour. And even the storms back here coming into Okarchi are still severe, coming into Okarchi again with another storm there. Winds are going to be again 60 to 70. So lots of heavy rain still falling. I want to point out a, more, a few more showers and storms now developing over Ninnikoff, which are not severe. The uh, leading edge of the gust front, let's go to velocity data here, Cass. Take a look at that. Just give everybody at home a, it's right here. See this red that's expanding to the south? That's the leading edge of winds of 60 to maybe as high as 70 miles per hour. David, if you want to take Alan's shot again, that heavy band's coming back in. Okay, all right. So With hail. The, the leading edge. All right, we got a little bit of hail in that. Let's go back to Alan. And Alan, where we have uh, lots of flooding going on, that heavy rain we talked about, it is there. Go ahead, give me an update. That storm is severe. We're close to it. Yeah, we've got some small hail falling, probably a penny-sized hail, but it's falling in the midst of this already wow. unfolding calamity of uh, high water. We've got probably two, two feet of water right this? now, two feet of water on uh, Council Road here between Reno and I-40. And again, as I pan, we've gone about 100 yards, so you're seeing different vehicles at different vantage points here. And you can see more vehicles in the ditch 
David. Can you see that? And these guys are checking, going car to car to make sure everybody's yeah, out. But right. Uh, anyway, and we've got one back here. That we, they're just uh, it's just littered. We've I know there's at least probably ten cars in this uh, two square block area that's just uh, completely submerged in water. You know, one one two three four feet of water depending on where they're at in the roadway here. Wow. Uh, we're going to make our way up to where the law enforcement is, about a hundred yards to our south, closer to I forty. Right. And uh, and see what they're doing. They they apparently were doing some high water rescues over there. And uh, we'll keep you posted on what we find. But, yeah, we've got a little small hail falling here in the midst of all this already going on. Back to you. Yeah, well, that just kind of makes it worse. I mean, the hail's not damaging hail. But uh, nonetheless, look at the rain there, folks. It is just, it is coming down. Not a whole lot of wind with that, it doesn't look like. Now, it's windy, but it's a far cry from what it was earlier. It's a far cry. So Alan's going to stay in this area. And there's more flooding to be found for sure, more cars uh, to, pay, to, take, to uh, take a peek at. Okay, let's go back to Lynx 3, and we're going to back out of this. Now, Alan's right here. He's near the outlet shops. This is where this flooding is. Here's that next little wave over him. Look at the storm down here over Mustang, back south of Mustang, going to have nickel and dime size hail with that. Anywhere on this line, especially as you get farther south, winds are going to be gusting to 50 to 60 miles per hour, right? Okay, so we're still going to have wind in here. All right, down through more Norman. Any other gust guys reported here as of late? Well, let me know if there have been. And then from there, down to Macomb, uh, St. Louis, this whole area is now beginning to fill in. Now the, the gust front is beginning to light up down to our south with thunderstorms here developing from cement, Alec, Payne, thunderstorms here increasing as this line comes in from the north. This whole area is going to line out and continue to make its way uh, to the south. So there we go. Yeah, big, big storm again. And it's, it's moving. It's, it's making its way south. But at the same time, it just keeps regenerating on the north and western side. And that's because we have low-level dynamics in place. Think about how hot and how muggy we were today. At one point today in Oklahoma City, it felt like 112 or give or take degrees, 110, 112, because of all that humidity. Dangerous heat today with all that humidity is just fuel for these storms. Okay, let's go back to Val and get an update, take that shot. And uh, get an update from about 40,000 og &E customers without power across the metro. An incredible number. It's been several years. Uh, the big wind event that was the last couple of days of April, I think two or three years ago, that went across the fairgrounds. We lost the arts that night. That was the last time we had this many people uh, in the dark at one time in Oklahoma City. About 40,000 og &E customers right now without power. Go ahead. Give me an update. Do we have Val? All right, David. Um, get that shot that's in front of us right there. Um, he's coming next. to us. We've got David. We've got a tree, another tree down. We're in, we're in Midwest City right now. And I, I mentioned a while ago that I spoke with uh, the police, and he said that they've got power lines down and they've got trees down scattered all over Midwest City. And I can tell you that probably about half of the areas we've driven through here are black and without power over here in Midwest City. You talk about 40,000 people without power, we're seeing why. Uh, Midwest City really got hit hard. Some areas, David, I'm seeing, and we talked about this a while ago, but I'm seeing 80 miles an hour plus. I mean, we had that large billboard knocked down, and there's a lot of other signs. There's street signs blown down, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's just a lot of damage around here, David. And uh, at least the good news, Val, you're getting a break in the wind. You're getting a break in the rain right now, pretty much. A little bit of rain coming back through. You're going to have a little more rain, but at least you're getting a, a break. But uh, there is a lot of this going on across the metro. This is Midwest City. Val has just gone. When he goes from block to block, he finds another tree, power line. Yeah, we've had signs down. I mean, lots of tree limbs down. There will be a lot of cleanup going on here uh, the next couple of days. But uh, this, uh, this is a typical summertime event. Jet stream winds are not extremely strong. But a lot of heat and a lot of instability. Okay, let's go to Hank, and uh, let's find out where Hank is, looking at his GPS. Hank is in uh, either going to be South Oklahoma City or North Moore, pretty close to I-35. And uh, Hank, it looks like uh, possibly a Bradford pair split down the middle. Go ahead, give me an update. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a Bradford pair. Um, oh, you see a power flash right there? Oh, there's power flashes right behind us. Um, Sorry. Uh, anyway, this this here is a pretty large tree. We're near Southwest 89th in Santa Fe. Uh, and what kind of distracted me is I saw a bunch of orange glows right behind that house. So we'll go check that out. But 
Uh, one of our viewers actually called in and told the news desk uh, she lives across the street from one of my family members. So we appreciate uh, Miss Betty Cummins for calling and telling me that this uh, huge tree has uh, split and landed on her porch. So it's a Bradford pear, and that's kind of what they do when they get them, you know, real strong mile an hour winds like we had. So Southwest 89th and May, or at Southwest 89th and Santa Fe. I'm sorry, back to you. Okay, great job, Hank. And again, I know a lot of builders want to put in Bradford pears, and that's fine because they grow fast. They are pretty in the fall. They have a nice white bloom uh, in the spring, but uh, they are not indigenous to Oklahoma, and they get trashed. So you'll have a tree for five or ten years, and you get one event, and it's over with. You're, you're better to go find a tree that is indigenous to our state, some form of maple or an oak. We have beautiful trees. We have trees that are, frankly, a lot prettier than uh, Bradford pears that you can plant. They don't grow as fast. Bradford pears are not from here. They're not from here. They don't originate from here. They don't, anyway. And they get hammered. They get hammered all the time. Am I right, Kelly, on that? I don't have Bradford pears. I'm just saying, I wouldn't plant one. Don't do it. They're so pretty. I know they are pretty. The Bradford Pear Society is on the phone for you. Right <laughs> Again, that's just one society that I've offended tonight, so I'm doing okay. All right, here we go. Uh, another shot here. Val's found more branches down. Let's go back to reflectivity and get a Lynx 3 control room. Get, can I give you the big view? The rain is letting up in Oklahoma City. Now, this will give us a chance for the waters to begin to drop. They already are some, right? Southwest Metro into more Norman. Flooding will continue here. The severe thunderstorm warning continues from Norman down to Purcell, back to Tuttle, over to Shawnee. Let's go ahead and zoom into Shawnee here. Take a closer look at what's going on right over Shawnee. I mean, it is coming down in buckets, four to five to six inches of rain per hour. Look at this little spin right here. See that? It looks like a little eddy. Remember the atmosphere, it's fluid, it's water, it's a river. Just like you walk out and look at a stream or a river, you see little things spinning. That's exactly what you have going on, especially when you have a lot of big difference in pressures that we've had going on this evening in the atmosphere, lots of rain, off and on, lots of wind. So you get this little spin going on here, and that's going to be kind of dropping south. But out ahead of that, uh, lots of heavy rain from just on and west of Shawnee down to Tecumseh. Going to have a little bit of flooding going on there, and also winds 60 miles per hour possible, maybe as high as 70. Let's go to velocity data here real quick. We're getting a clear slot in the radar here. Let's see what it looks like. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like a whole lot, but I still think we can see winds uh, 50 to 60 uh, with that. Okay, let's go back to reflectivity. We're going to walk this line. And, okay, so heavy rain in Pottawatomie County. Let's come back to the west here. Give you an update. More uh, Noble down to Slaughterville. Back to the west. Bridge Creek, Mustang. These storms are all severe coming into Norman. There will be flooding in Norman. And uh, back to Moore. Back to Newcastle Casino, Bridge Creek, Mustang. Let's come back to the northwest in the Canadian County. This storm is really ramped up now over Piedmont, and this is going to go right over Allen. More heavy rain, going to have some hail in that. That storm's severe. Another storm is severe over Okarchi, sliding southeast, and another storm, check this out, over Hitchcock. It will not end. So the severe storms, guys, they continue to come in from the northwest. More flooding it will continue for sure, and more dangerous flooding. Guys, back to you. Okay, we'll get back over to you in just a moment, David, but we do want to update you on that very serious situation going on near Lake Overholzer. Yeah, near the dam, let's go to our Clayton Cummins, who's worked his way over there and reported perhaps someone, a man near the dam in danger. Clayton? Kelly Amanda, this is what we know right now. Police and rescue crews, fire crews as well, responded to the south side of Lake Overholzer. This is right near the dam on the south side. You might be able to see behind me here, there is still a police presence, but not as big as there was earlier. I did speak to a witness here who tells me that apparently there was a man down uh, near the concrete slabs on the uh, lowest part of this dam. Apparently that man was down there at the wrong point in time, right when this evening storms went through, all of that water somehow got him trapped near the bottom of that dam. The good news here is that uh, apparently rescue crews were able to uh, successfully rescue uh, that person. Uh, we are not familiar, we're not sure on what the age is, uh, but we are working to uh, confirm those details here again. 
Still a police presence out here at uh, the south side of Lake Overholzer as crews respond to uh, a possible drowning here. But it sounds like, uh, according to a witness, that uh, that person was able to be safely brought back up to the shore. That is the latest here on the south side of Lake Overholzer. Clayton Cummins, Oklahoma Zone News 9. All right, Clayton, seen a lot of folks fishing down below that dam. It's pretty common. Uh, not a good idea to be down there in a storm. We've had people trapped down there before. We're so glad to hear yeah. that update because when we heard that the dive team from the fire department is going out there, you just never know. So we appreciate that update from Clayton. David, getting the latest numbers from OG&E, 43,736 customers just with OG&E yeah. that are without power right now. 20,000, more than 20,000 just in the Oklahoma City area. And the next largest area without power looks like War Acres with 11,268 customers that's homes and that's businesses a lot in more acres that's basically the whole town in, in more acres mm -hmm. you're talking about 11,000 homes and businesses so they'll be working to get power restored but of course they're concerned about the lightning out there David yeah I mean remember the crews right they got to be out in the middle of this and they're trying to get the lines back up and repaired and all that and it's gonna be a while because these storms just keep coming in over the same area if this had moved out uh, it would be okay but uh, the West Metro one severe storm now going through Piedmont uh, down to Yukon, another severe storm at Okarchi, another potentially severe storm at Hitchcock, sliding southeast now at roughly about 20 miles per hour. The big wall of water that's been sitting on top of Oklahoma City is now beginning to push to the south. And then we have new storms developing near Ninacal. Those are not severe, but they are producing heavy rain right over Ninacal, just south of Chickasha, and that's going to head over towards Purcell. So flooding in Norman, flooding in Moore, Tuttle, going to have some flooding on and just west of Shawnee. But a good chunk of Oklahoma City proper to the north of the Edmund area in Luther, the rain is beginning to subside in this heavy band of rain. And this is going to continue for a while from the northwest, okay? Let's go to Hank. And to Hank's shot, uh, a lot of things going on in this shot. Hank, looks like you've got damage there and maybe down to your left or to your right. I don't know. We were looking at your shot earlier. Uh, power pole there snapped off midway up. Uh, in southeast Oklahoma City. Give me your exact location there, Hank. Go ahead. And David, this is at Southwest 89th and Shields, um, right across from the Crossroads Church. Uh, so, yeah, there's three power poles down here, and you can see that, uh, of course, the, the top of it's dangling, but then the pole right there in front of that little boat on the building there is actually snapped off to the ground. And as Patty pans, there's three lines down total, and you can see that... Uh, that's a big old line, that's a big old pole that's been snapped off at the base. So this is uh, the southwest 89th and Shields area, and it kind of coincides to earlier when we were coming through and getting all that wind that we were seeing all these power flashes of west of I-35 just a little bit running right down Shields and then down into Moore. Uh, so, yeah, there was some pretty strong winds. This is about uh, a half a mile south of the shot where we showed you that tree that was broke off uh, on the last hit. So Southwest uh, 89th and Shields, back to you, David. Great job there, Hank, and uh, wow, again, south, you know, Southwest Oklahoma City, 89th and Shields, several power poles down, folks in the dark without power uh, down there. Let's go to Links 3. Uh, the severe storms just continue to roll in on this western flank. So this is, this is where all the flooding is going to continue. Canadian County, Kingfisher County, and this is going to be western and southwestern Oklahoma County, down towards the airport, down towards Moore. This line at least has three to four more hours of rain in it, off and on, all right? Now, it's not as, let's just say, continuous as what the big blob was earlier, but it's still enough, unless it weakens, which eventually this stuff will begin to weaken. But no signs of it right now, at least not with this northwestern and western flank. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom on in. Cassie, let's take a closer look. This is next July. live. The Okarchi storm. Uh, yeah, Which... Okarchi uh, storm and Piedmont storm. This one uh, is still pretty intense now. Coming out of Piedmont, going right down northwest highway. Now coming into Yukon. Let's go ahead and zoom on in here, Cass. Take a closer look. There's Piedmont. There's Sundance. Going right into the airport. Heavy, heavy rain out of this, right? Got to have nickel and dime, maybe even some quarter size hail just barely north of Piedmont. Nickel and I for sure. Winds in here 50 to 60 miles per hour. It's going to go right over uh, War Acres. It's going to go right over West Oklahoma City and Bethany as it slides to the southeast. Notice Edmond getting a break. 
And uh, that's the trend that we're seeing, at least for Edmond North and East. But this band is going to continue. Okay, let's go a little farther northwest. Let's leave Piedmont. And uh, look at this, Okarchi, back down to uh, Angel Ridge Race Park. Okay, northwest of that, just northwest of the Lucky Star Casino. Severe storm here. Going to have nickel and dime, maybe some quarter size hail in that. Let's go a little farther northwest. And it just doesn't end. Now over Hitchcock, uh, pretty good hail in this, okay? Just south of Hitchcock, uh, just went right over Romano's, Romano's State Park. That's sliding to the southeast. So let's kind of back out of this, kind of give everybody other overview here of, of, of the rain train, the storm train that continues in the West Metro, which is not good. Okay, uh, let's go back to Val and get an update from Val Castor. Find out where he is. He's got lots of debris, for Come sure. Val, and uh, there you go. Boy, every time... Val Castor, every time you turn a corner or, or a new block or something, you come up with more damage and tree limbs and power lines down and such. Go ahead, give me an update. Well, yeah, David, there's another tree down over here. And I tell you what, uh, it, just about, I don't, I can't go a half a mile down the road without finding something. Either a sign down or trees down or debris in the middle of the road. Earlier, David, we had a, an entire large highway sign that was laying in the middle of I-40, and uh, you could tell there was dents in it where people had been running over it, trucks and cars and everything else. I swerved to miss it. I saw it coming up, but it was a large highway sign. took up about two lanes. So a lot of stuff going on. We spoke with uh, the local police over here, and they we heard sirens all over the place. Uh, they're very, very busy. He said that there's power lines down all over town, David. Back to you. Okay, all right, great job there, Val. Stay with it here. And uh, Val, we're gonna have something here for you. What's the address of that? Well, we have two separate things. Two separate things we don't have for our Del City, City Fire Chief Go just ahead. telling us two separate things here. He says there is damage to the Dollar Tree okay. in the 4300 block of Southeast 15th Street. Also, they are checking on a partial roof collapse to a church at 3900 Southeast 27th Street in Dell City. Okay. So two different things uh, Chief Purcell with Dell City Fire Department is telling us about. That Dollar Tree store is near where Val was earlier on that wreck. Yeah, right, he was right there. Southeast okay. 15th. Uh, Justin Rudisell, did you get those? Those two things? Okay, all right, we'll get those about. Val's right there anyway, we'll get him over there. Okay, let's go back to Alan Brosey here. And uh, Alan, in the same area, but not quite, but more flooding, look at that carnage. And Alan, the rain, you got a little bit of a break. There's more heavy rain coming, Alan Brosey, right where you are. And I mean, it is headed right for you. Look at that, folks. Wow. Is that, it, Alan, is that still at Reno and Council? Where are you? Yeah, David, we're still at Reno and Council. And you can see, uh, I mean, we've got firemen over here trying to keep people from driving through this. Uh, we, we saw a guy just about get his soul ripped out of his body because he was going into four feet of water, and firemen finally got him stopped. But, uh, gosh, these people are driving around the roadblocks. We've got fire blocking now all the uh, all the people have been rescued out of these vehicles uh so that's clear but the water's still high we can't get traffic through there so they've got it blocked off uh we've just we've got seven eight ten cars still left over here in the roadway that's going to be here for a while because we just looked at the radar and confirmed what you were saying we've got another storm coming in from piedmont uh the water has probably dropped six inches from this location, but it's still two and a half to three and a half feet deep, depending on where you're at. So, wow. uh, Reno and Council, Reno and Meridian, Reno and MacArthur, Reno and Rockwell, we encountered yes. high water all through there. So, Reno just stay off of Reno, stay off of Reno if you can, stay on high ground. Back to you, David. Okay. All right. Great job, Alan. Look at that, folks. I mean, that is a lake at Reno and Council right now. Look at the cars. These are, uh, yeah, total. That car's totaled. That car's totaled. Uh, the engine's underwater, forget about it. Uh, this car, the water was about six to 10 inches higher. Uh, that's gonna be nearly a total loss. And again, I'm not saying all these people, you know, but uh, when, you, when you're driving anywhere, and I know the rain was coming down real heavy, it's hard to see, especially at night. But uh, you just cannot drive into water. You have no idea how deep it is. Even if it's a road that you drive in and drive on every day of your life, you don't drive it with water up high or one to two, three feet deep, so you don't know. You don't know how to judge that. So you're thinking, oh, it's six inches deep. No, it's not. It's three feet deep. You drive into it, and then you can't see the road. You panic. You drive off in a ditch, and then yeah, your world's turned upside down. So uh, say it again. If there's water over the road, turn around. Don't drown. Don't lose your life. Don't lose your car. I mean, these people are going to have to mess with the insurance, and yeah, it's just a mess. It's a mess. So anyway, okay, let's go back to links three. 
and then uh, see what's going on here. Here comes the next heavy wave of rain, folks, coming out of Piedmont. This is going to go right over uh, West Oklahoma City, Bethany, War Acres, Wiley Post, down to Lillard Park. We're going to have more flooding with this, and this storm is severe at the same time. Nickel and dime size hill. Winds could be as high as 50 miles per hour in this, maybe as high as 60. From Piedmont back down to Yukon, this will be another wave of storms coming into the west and southwestern sides of Oklahoma City. I mean, just crazy. Okay, let's go a little farther northwest to the other severe storm. And then we're going to check in with Tom. Severe storm right over Okarchi. Uh, that's sliding southeast down towards Richland. That storm is severe. Okay, we got to keep an eye on that. Let's go a little farther northwest here. And another potentially almost severe storm now, pretty close to it, just south of Hitchcock. That's headed to Omega. That's going to head down to the southeast and pass just east of Watonga, at least that part of the storm will. And then another storm coming up here near Eagle City that's getting stronger. That's going to go right over Watonga. So this flanking line to the west-northwest does happen. Low-level dynamics kicking in, the jet overhead and cool front making its way through. The bottom line is this is going to go on. This is starting to push south. Hopefully this will continue to, continue to move on out. Okay, so let's back out of this. Cass, were you looking at uh, rainfall amounts? I do. I have those on. Let's take um, her Winx shot, one. control room. Oh, I got to get back on my take box. Take her shot. <laughs> and. Uh, Almost fell oh, off my box. A little higher now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there you go. Okay, so we've got storm totals now on links one, and we've had quite a bit of rain. Obviously, rain rates are pretty high, they've been coming down just in buckets. And so right around the metro, we've had anywhere between about one to two and a half to really nearly three inches of rain. And especially well to the north, you can see up towards Cashin and up towards Reading, we've got three and a half between three and a half to four and a half, almost four corners, about three and a half. And where we're seeing the higher totals in and around Oklahoma City Metro itself, really Bethany, between Bethany and War Acres, seeing a lot of uh, close to three inches. I'm going to kind of query some more of this and just kind of see what all is common. And yeah, anywhere between about two and a half to three inches of rain. Looking at Bobby's shot, I'm not seeing a whole lot of flooding where he's at right now, but you can see where Bobby is. He's probably on the Northwest Expressway headed up to the north and west, but right now he's more or less seeing a lot of uh, leftover wind damage or wind debris. We've got a lot of leaves kind of everywhere on the roads. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and kind of see what else we've got going on across the metro. We haven't picked up a whole lot officially yet in downtown Oklahoma City. just hasn't calculated it yet, but it's definitely going to be uh, anywhere at least between one and a half to as much as around three inches. And some people are going to get a lot more than others, but of course, most of the rain so far has fallen in parts of Kingfisher County and Southwest Logan County. Let's go ahead and go to over to links three and I'm going to show you where the storms are right now, what they're kind of doing, what the big view is. And I'm also going to turn on our lightning count because that's been a big issue here. It's been earlier it was the wind and now we've got the flooding issue and we've also got still a lot of lightning strikes. And we're talking about lightning and wind. It's really putting out all the power. But right now still it's pretty loud. We do have quite a bit of lightning as far as any hail is concerned. Looking at our barren button, it's going to be very sporadic, very isolated. But it looks like we could have a pretty good hail core there uh, just south and west of uh, Tuttle, right? Coming just, well, south of Sooner there. Look, look at reflectivity. Yeah, do that again. You, you were all over that. Do that again. Wow, look at that. Now, this may be yeah. a little bit hot, yeah, it's but, be. but this storm is kind of out here by itself. It hasn't been contaminated somewhat by all the rain cold air. It still has. In, it's in that same environment, but it's down here by itself. That's going to be at least quarters, if not golf ball size hail south of Tuttle. Go ahead and lapse this, Cass. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it's doing there. And moving, yeah, moving more of the same. East, southeast towards Blanchard. And right now, that's going to be at least quarters, maybe some golf ball size hail in there. Some small hail, Norman. Where's Tom? Had him hurt. What? Tom's shot. He's Oklahoma City. Okay, his shot is frozen. Okay. And then we have the other hail cores. Now, let's go back in here to Canadian County. And uh, this has a pretty good little hail core in it, south of Okarchi. It has weakened slightly, but still severe. The hail core is going to go on and just south of Okarchi, just a couple of miles. Going to have nickel and dime, maybe quarters in that. And let's go to the northwest up near Watonga and Hitchcock. And uh, these are producing some small hail there. Uh, nothing too crazy, but uh, wow, they st the storms just keep they just keep coming. Okay, let's go back to links three and stay with this. Let's turn on reflectivity here. And uh, again, we're beginning to dry out. You can see things. We're beginning to line out, kind of not look like they did an hour ago or a couple of hours ago. They're beginning to kind of 
they're still strong, don't get me wrong, it's severe, but we're getting this one line in here of storms running from Hitchcock to Omega, and this is gonna continue for several more hours. So we're gonna have flooding in here, Canadian County, back to El Reno, to Okarchi, to Piedmont, flash flood warning for you, down to Mustang. We're gonna have flooding in here. Now, Edmond to Luther, the rain has ended. Now, we still might see a little more rain overnight, but the main show is gonna be in this band in here, okay? Uh, more Norman, Noble, getting reports of more flooding going on down there, at least in some areas. And uh, Tom Schott, okay, Tom Schott is back up now. Let's go back to Tom and get an update on uh, Tom and where he is. Tom, what have you found here in the last half hour or so? Go ahead and give me an update. Yeah, I, I drove from north of downtown through downtown, and um, the Mary Gardens, that area uh, by the Botanical Center, there's a lot of tree damage, so they're going to have a, a lot to clean up tomorrow. Um, I did see a lot of signs down. Uh, the concert was letting out as I was driving through just about 10 minutes ago, and it, it's gridlocked down there because a lot of the, the lights are out, so that's going to be a mess over there for a little while. Um, but right now I'm heading south of downtown where I did see some big um, billboards earlier that were um, heavily damaged. So I'll get back to you when I'm over there. Back to you, David. Okay, and uh, <laughs> Tom, have you, have you been by the new park? Did you see any damage by there? I know all the trees are new, which kind of concerns us a little bit, obviously, but uh, they planted... Uh, Kelly, how many trees were planted? Close to 1,000. Close to 1,000 trees. So I'm sure they're staked, and I'm sure that's good. But did you see any damage? I know it's dark, but around the park, the new park... You no, know, um, just just by seeing all of the established trees that were damaged, I'd be really concerned about the park because it was just right across the street from there where all of those trees, there's a whole bunch of trees that were down. So with with new trees, that, that could be pretty concerning. I didn't see anything though because it was too dark. Okay, but but you did say that you see did see damage to the trees in and around the uh, botanical gardens right there on the corner, right? You saw some damage there. Yeah, there was a lot of damage, yeah, a lot of tree, tree limbs down, um, lots of big that? trees down, too, so. Yeah. Okay. Hey, well, that's not good. Those trees have been there a long time. And, uh, again, Tom was just saying, lots of tree damage, lots of trees down in and around the botanical garden. So there's going to be tree damage for sure, not only there, but also scattered through the Oklahoma City area. Uh, we'll know a lot more overnight tonight as crews get out and evaluate. Also, come sun up early tomorrow morning. We'll know a lot more as well, but uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of damage. Okay, here comes the next wave. It just won't end. We're talking about the next wave of rain. Heavy rain now, not severe, but heavy rain running from Mercy Hospital to Bethany down to Will Rogers, uh, down to Newcastle, Norman. We're going to have more localized flooding going on there. And then Cassie, let's jump to the northwest here. Severe storm over Okarchi now, south of Okarchi, sliding down towards El Reno. If you live in El Reno or north and east of town, Get ready for winds 50 to 60 miles per hour uh, with that. All right, so everything's sliding from the northwest to the southeast now at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. These storms are all still severe. Folks, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to get a commercial in. We'll be back right after that. Stay News 9. We'll keep you advised. Everyday activities cause wrinkles keep and there's nothing.